place just about a minute ago. Mike Rozier making his final appearance at home at Memorial Stadium. A tremendous ovation from another sellout crowd here in Lincoln. And the introduction of another big star, Turner Gill. Gill, Rozier, and Irving Fryer, and the rest of the Nebraska seniors closing out their home careers today as Nebraska seeks its 11th consecutive win. Jayhawks of Kansas against the number one rated Cornhuskers of Nebraska. And very likely you'll be watching the 1983 Heisman Trophy winner, Mike Rozier, favored by most to win the award. He's averaging nearly eight yards per carry, and he is on the verge of tying or breaking five NCAA rushing and scoring records. He'll be in action today. And he won't be alone because they're an explosive team, perhaps the most explosive in college football history, featuring, among others, Turner Gill at quarterback and the flanker wingback number 27, Irving Fryer. Turner Gill can run the option, but he can also throw deep, as evidenced here. And in Fryer, he may have the premier receiver in the country. Nebraska against Kansas coming up today. Broad day, temperature high 30s, but it's dry. Some snow showers this morning. Capacity crowd, 130th consecutive capacity crowd in this stadium as Kansas gets set to take on Nebraska. Nebraska rolling toward a certain Orange Bowl berth. I'm Al Michaels along with Lee Groscup. The big question around here is not, is Nebraska the best team in college football today? I think that's pretty obvious, but is Nebraska the best of all time? And the, the people around here can make a pretty good case for that. I think in terms of offensive explosion, they are the greatest college football team that I've ever seen. A lot of superlatives. Let's start with their eye back, Mike Rozier. In a word, I think he will win the Heisman Trophy this season as the greatest eye back in the country. And uh, that's saying a lot because there's some good backs and, and good in Nebraska's history. Also, their quarterback, Turner Gill, maybe the best and most talented they have ever had. Irving Fryer, the wingback, I think is the best wide receiver wingback in the country and ranks right up there with Johnny Rogers as the greatest Nebraska wingback of all time. Sort of lost in the shuffle because Nebraska is averaging 53 points a game is the fact that Kansas can score as well and they've got a pretty good quarterback. Frank Sire has played under tremendous adversity this season because of the tragic shooting death of his father back in August but he's had a great season and Al I think he is probably the most underrated quarterback in the country this year might be the surprise of the pro draft. Nebraska an overwhelming favorite as we get set to kick it off in Lincoln the Jayhawks against the Huskers. And see Nebraska will receive the opening kickoff. Jeff Smith is back deep to receive. He's returned six this year, averaging a little more than 17 per return. And he's back with Ricky Simmons. And to kick off for Kansas is one of the best place kickers in the country, Bruce Kohlmeyer. Soccer-style kicker as we get set to get underway in Lincoln. Nebraska closing out its home schedule. They will end their season, their regular season anyway, in two weeks at Oklahoma. Good deep kick, and it's fielded by Ricky Simmons a couple of yards in. And Jeff Smith says, stay there. You know what our offense can do. We'll take it at the 20-yard line. And the men who run this machine, Turner Gill, the quarterback out of Fort Worth. Then Mike Rozier, the probable Heisman winner. Mark Shaleen is a fullback who doesn't get a lot of publicity because of his heralded teammates. Irving Fryer may be the best at his position in the country. And Ricky Simmons is the split end. The Nebraska Cornhuskers averaging 52.9 points per game. Start this drive from the 20 on first and 10 out of the I formation. And this is Rozier slithering to the outside and slipping down at the 23. Snow showers this morning, so the turf is a little slick. Up front now, you've got Benning. Griminger is the left guard, 260 pounder. Trainowitz is the center. He's been hobbled this week, but he's in there. Stein Cooler may win the Outland Trophy and Lombardi Awards, and Reardon is the tackle. Another very good one, along with Inga in the tight end. Gain of three, second down and seven from the 23-yard line, and it's the up back, Shaleen, number 25, who gains one, and it's third down and six. Defensively, Kansas with Hardy, Cooper, Avery, Timmons, Masaniai, and Gant up front, Williams and Pless are the linebackers. Pless is a pretty good one, number 60. Man who should be in on a lot of tackles today. Coulter, Patterson, and Ziegler are the three defensive backs. Third down and six. 
with Fryer in motion from the 24-yard line, and Turner Gill, who's got a fine arm to put it up and complete for a first down, but a fumble at the 37-yard line, but it went out of bounds. Mark Shaleen made the grab, picked up the first down, and then fortuitously for Nebraska, fumbled the ball out of bounds. Turner Gill with a single back offense. Now the fullback is the trailing back out here in the flat. He catches the ball in the flat from Turner Gill. Mark Shaleen covers the ball right there, then loses it. It is stripped by Wayne Ziegler, number 18 by Kansas, but fortunately it goes out of bounds. The Huskers retain the football. Willie Fless almost made the recovery, number 60, but he didn't get there in time. So here's Rozier, switching to the outside, and the game is done. Very close to the first down. They'll spot it just outside the 46-yard line. Elvis Patterson, who was a defensive end last week, and they moved into quarterback, made the stop. Rozier's numbers, as you look at them, they're 24 touchdowns all on the ground. Two more touchdowns, and he'll tie the NCAA record for most touchdowns rushing in the season. That was set by Lydell Mitchell of Penn State back in 1971. And what's fascinating about that is that in that same backfield with Mitchell was Franco Harris. I covered those two in a ball game against Iowa in 1971, and it was an incredible backfield. But I think this backfield may be even more talented. Well, what's interesting is the numbers that will pop up through the day, and those of you in this area know all about Nebraska and what they've done. Those numbers would be even more impressive, but you have to keep in mind Nebraska keeps blowing people out. Osborne is not the kind of coach who's going to pour it on. And as a consequence, if he wanted to, uh, he could have Rozier in there to the point where Mike might have had a 2,500-yard season, which would have been an all-time record. As a result of that, they have several other runners who are over the 300-yard mark. So the numbers are even more impressive than they appear on the screen. Second down and inches from the 47-yard line and an easy first down for Saleem, who carries the ball across the 50 and into Kansas territory. Great offensive lineman today will be taking a look at Dean Steinkuhl to 71. He is 270 pounds, and look at him. He is one of the 12 finalists for the Lombardi Trophy, Outland candidate. And, you know, he was a high school fullback, and you notice how he keeps those feet moving all the time? Great interior lineman, and an almost certain first-round pick. And first down, this is Rosier. First down, and a lot more as he goes all the way into the touchdown. Benning and Grimminger were the two offensive linemen who sprung it for him. And Mike Rosier goes in for 49, and Nebraska, on its very first drive, looks just like Nebraska. No problem. One minute, 55 seconds, 80 yards, six to nothing, going on seven. Scott Livingston to attempt the extra point out of the hold of Turner Gill. Livingston has kicked 30 of 31 this season. Nebraska's drive, consuming six plays. Bumble. Gill picking it up and now looking for two. And Turner throwing and incomplete. Out of the end zone intended for Tim Bergan, number 32. Mike Rozier told us yesterday this is his favorite play. Look at it. It's student body left. Now it's Benning and Grimminger who make the key blocks that spring him along the left side. Then it's just a foot race to the end zone. Remember, he has 4-5 speed in the 40-yard dash. The entire backfield runs 4-5 or better. So we're underway in Nebraska leads by a score of 6 to nothing. All right, thank you, Jim. And uh, as Tom Osborne charts a play for the Nebraska offense, they lead 6 to nothing, and Nebraska kicks off with Mims taking the kick at the 10-yard line and knocked down at the 25. First and 10 for Kansas. And so they'll start their first drive from the 25, make it the 26 yard line. Frank Sire is the quarterback, a good one. There's Mims who's taken over as the odd back. E.J. Jones is the fullback, number 39. The wide outs are Darren Green from Lawrence, and Bob Johnson is a very good wide receiver. He's caught 48 this season, averaging 19.9 per catch. They spotted at the 25-yard line. Nebraska on top by a score of 6 to nothing. First down with four receivers now in this set. Two slots and two wideouts. And they give it to the ace back, who is Mims. And he 
gains three after the 28 yard line. Offensive line now for Kansas. The men will have their hands full today. Renwick Atkins from Chicago is 265. Paul Fairchild is listed at 257. Semeski is the way Benny pronounces it at 265. Casey Brown, the right guard, 260. Reggie Smith from Chicago is 260. And Sylvester Bird is the tight end. Second down, seven for the Jayhawks from the 29-yard line under coach Mike Gottfried. And the first pass attempted by Sire is incomplete, intended for Darren Green. The Nebraska defense includes Weber, Herman, Tranberg, Stuckey, Strasburger, Profit and Knox are the linebackers. Knox is a very good one. Number 44, Fisher, Burke, Clark, and McCashlin are the defensive backs. Third down and six with the ball at the 29-yard line. Nebraska leading early, six to nothing. Sire giving to Mims. He has a little bit of room, but it closes down, and he is stopped before he can get the first down by Todd Profit. Number 34 is making the first start of his career. Al, with that last run by Mike Rozier, he has now eclipsed his own personal rushing record. He now has a total of 1,719 yards. So you talked at the top of the show how he's on the verge of uh, breaking several uh, personal and national records. He's already broken one on his first long carry of the day. He went in from 49 for the touchdown as Clint Colborn gets set to kick, averaging a little better than 37. Fryer and Smith both go back deep for Nebraska. The kick fielded by Irving Fryer at the 19-yard line tries to get some blocking, but it never develops, and as a consequence, they pin it back at the 17. So the Cornhuskers take over there. 11:22 remaining in the first quarter. It's six to nothing, Nebraska. Al Michaels and Lee Groskopf at Memorial Stadium in Lincoln, Nebraska. Cold, gray day, but Nebraska on top by a score of six to nothing. They have it at the 18-yard line. Turner Gill, the quarterback. To Rozier. Pass the play. Rozier nearly broke that one. He gets the first down. They stop him at the 33-yard line. Well, Bob Devaney was the coach of the 71 team. He's the AD here now. And I had this chat with Bob yesterday. Bob, the question you've been asked a lot, let me ask you to assess it at this point of the season now. This team versus the team you had in 1971, which is better? Well, it's very difficult to say at this point in the season, uh, as, you know, it's just, as the season is over, I well, can answer that better. I think offensively, this team is definitely a better team than we had in 1971. This is the most explosive offensive team I've ever seen any place out. And it's a, it's a great football team all the way around, but I think defensively, perhaps at this stage, the 71 team probably yeah, looked a little better. Bob Devaney, a man who should know. And I mean, that seems to be the big question around Lincoln and these parts. Uh, what's the greatest college football team of all time? It's really difficult, of course, because people these days are bigger and stronger and faster. So it's difficult to compare a team from one era with a team from another. But let's face it, this is one of the best of all time. There's little doubt about that at this point. Second down and seven from the 37-yard line. And Rozier moves to the outside, breaks a tackle, and works his way out to the 45-yard line in the first down. He's tripped up by Wayne Ziegler. You're looking at a man who may be the first pick in the NFL draft. And I think that he's uh, clearly the, uh, the Heisman Trophy favorite right now by a long ways. Uh, getting back to Bob Devaney and Johnny Rogers, uh, I think Johnny Rogers is still the most exciting football player that Nebraska has ever had. Some of his numbers have been surpassed, but in terms of just offensive excitement, he was a threat every time he touched the football. Crowd-pleasing player. Rozier taking the pitch and looks for Rome inside. There's a fumble, and let's see who's got it at the 42-yard line. With Nebraska on top, 6 to nothing, they maintain possession. One of the offensive linemen alertly was able to backtrack and get in there 
And as they unpile, it turns out to be the tight end, Monty Ingebrigtsen, number 83, who makes the recovery. Getting back to that 1971 team, Al, you know, you got to remember just uh, a quick look right here. And, and the man who's going to be so important for Kansas today is Willie Pless, number 60. He's the inside linebacker in the wild uh, wide tackle six. He gets the first hit there, forces the fumble. Nebraska recovers. Loss of three. It's second down and 13. Huskers from the 42-yard line. Turner Gill. There's a flag thrown. He hits Shaleen, and Shaleen takes it out to the 47-yard line, and the marker is down at the 37-yard line. It may be holding on Griminger, number 58, the offensive left guard. So wait for the call. And the officials, all out of the Big 8 Conference, of course, are headed today by the referee, John McClintock. Holding is the call against Nebraska. We believe it was Griminger. Interesting story. I mean, Fable has it anyway that Griminger is a very ornery type. He is a junior from Grand Island, Nebraska, and a fellow who at one point in his career did not take a shower for three weeks. Oh, boy. That would make you ornery. It would. It would blow a few defensive linemen right out of there without any contact, in fact. <laughs> You know, getting back to the 1971 team and to amplify on what Bob Devaney had to say, Al, uh, let's listen here for a moment. Holding penalty on the offense. Still second down. To get back to the 1971 team, and maybe I'll finish this story by the end of the second quarter. Could be. They had two outlet players on that team in, in Jacobson and Glover, and they also had Willie Harper on that team who went on and still playing in the pros now. So that's some indication of how powerful they were defensively. On second down and 23, Gill is going deep and is incomplete at the 35-yard line. Todd Crane, number 80, couldn't hold on to it. It's interesting, around the country, uh, for some folks who haven't seen Nebraska, they think about Rozier and Fryer. They think of Gill as an option quarterback without much of an arm, but uh, that's a fallacy. Look at this as he throws his tight end, Todd Crane, number 80, to the post. And that was a very catchable pass. You don't see Turner Gill throw that many bad passes. In fact, his passing efficiency is number one in the country, 166.5. And that would put him ahead of Steve Young. However, he hasn't thrown enough time. A third and 23 on the option. Gill has a lot of open space. And Turner takes it out to pass the 40-yard line, but shy of a first down. They'll spot it at the 41. Travis Party made the stop. So thanks in good measure to the penalty, the holding call, Kansas is able to hold Nebraska on this drive with eight minutes and 37 seconds remaining in the first quarter. The Cornhusters will have to punt. Scott Livingston, who is their place kicker as well as their punter, averaging 41.6 this season. Darren Green, has dropped back as the single safety for Kansas at the 20-yard line. Snap is good, and the kick is a high kick, not a whole lot of distance, and a fair catch is called for and made at the 15-yard line by Darren Green, number 22. 42-yard punt, it's 6-0 Huskers. Series record is reflected there, Nebraska with a big edge, and Nebraska's won 14 straight. Kansas has not beaten the Huskers since 1968. First down for Kansas from the 16-yard line. Sire on a short roll to the right, throwing complete out to the 30-yard line to Bob Johnson, number 88. Johnson making his 49th catch of the season. And that ties the Kansas record held by Emmett Edwards to this point. On the right, Frank Sire. On the left, Bob Johnson, number 88, who's playing with pain today. Shoulder separation. He is uh, showing you there that he has a lot of courage and the ability to catch that football in traffic. Johnson has also just set a big eight single season record for yards. 971 receiving yards this season for Johnson. So at the 30 yard line, Sire goes back to pass, tries to set up the screen and after pumping, tries to set it up. And he was fortunate that uh, the pass didn't get there because E.J. Jones would have been buried right away. Second down and 10. 
Well, Lee, you touched on it on the open, and we're not going to belabor the point. I think a lot of people, uh, obviously, in this area know about Sire, know about the personal tragedy with his father, who had moved from California to Lawrence, Kansas, murdered in late August. So it's been a, a very trying year for Frank. He did have uh, the greatest moment of his career against Southern California, of course, when he went out to Los Angeles and upset the Trojans earlier this year. Draw play, in some room through the middle, and he exploits it as he gets out to close to the 40-yard line. He's stopped there by Mike McCashlin, number two. So the Jayhawks trying to put together a drive. Now, Texas was down 14-3 to at one point. They've come back. It's 14-12. So a major upset, though, in the making possibly there. SMU ranked seventh, leading Texas Tech 6 to nothing in the second quarter. Illinois, with a victory today, goes to the Rose Bowl officially. They're leading, and Ohio State is routing Northwestern. On third down and short, not a whole lot of room through the middle. Sire carrying himself, and we'll see where they spot it. The yardstick is right on the 40-yard line. Maybe just a tad past the 40, we'll see. In any event, uh, it appears to be close enough for a measurement. Missouri at the half, leading Oklahoma State. Oklahoma at the half, rebounding after last week's loss to Missouri. Kansas State at halftime, leading Iowa State by a score of 20 12. And as you can see, Kansas has come up just short on Sire's sneak, so it'll be forced to catch with seven minutes and three seconds remaining in the first quarter. There is Irving Fryer. He's back to receive, along with Jeff Smith, Clint Colborne to do the punting. Nebraska on top, six to nothing. High spiraling angling kick that's fielded by Smith, and he's decked right away at the 24-yard line. Jeff Coulter came down there to pop him after a 37 yard punt with the breeze at his back. So 640 remaining in the quarter. Talked to Turner Gill yesterday uh, about the fact he hasn't passed that much but still he's been effective here through his career. Well it doesn't really bother I guess in a way it doesn't way it doesn't you know I'm a team type player and uh, you know the individual goals I just want them to come as they come you know um, I'm a team player and I want the, the passing to come the rushing and you know I do both well and that's why I'm fit real well into this offense because I can't do both, and we not really to win games, not to uh, try to make individual arms for Turner Gill. Well put from a man who probably could have had a different sort of career had he gone to a passing school. His arm is good enough, but uh, all things considered, I don't think he would trade his career for anybody else's. At this point, he's going to probably play on a national championship team. People have respected him. He got a tremendous ovation today when he was announced uh, prior to the game for his final appearance. He has just given to Rozier, who gains eight, and it's second down and two at the 32-yard line. And it's Rozier again moving through the middle and might have the first down as he nudges his way out to the 35-yard line. And Rozier has already gained 93 yards today. Getting back to Turner Gill and what you were talking about, Al, uh, they have had some outstanding quarterbacks here at Nebraska, first including Vince Carragamo, David Hum, uh, Jerry Taggy. But they think, and I'm talking about most of the officials, the coaches, and, and what have you, they feel that the Turner Gill, in terms of uh, all-purpose talent, is the best that they have ever had. Pretty good record right there with him starting. 27-1. and one. First down from the 35-yard line. Gill and it's Irving Fryer doing something that uh, is extremely uncharacteristic. Took his eye off the ball, drops it second down and 10. We have a moment to spend with Jim Lampley for this update from New York. Go ahead, Poon. Doors, Al. Texas has broken the scoring drought, 17 third quarter points. They now lead 20 to 14 in the fourth. Boston College's major bowl bubble was burst today. Syracuse beat them 21 to 10. The big beneficiary in the East is Pitt, back in the major bowl picture. Al Michaels. All right, Jim, second down and 10 for Nebraska from the 35 yard line. Not a whole lot of room for Shaleen over the right side. Look at the Kansas defense uh, trying to get tough, at least early on. It looked like uh, 
they were in for a pretty good shredding the way Nebraska moved on that first series, but they were able to hold them on the second series. And right now they've uh, put Nebraska in a position where it's third down and nine. Kansas is one of the few teams in Division I football that still plays the old wide tackle six. Because of that, they're sometimes very effective against the run. Tom Rathman is the sole running back in this set with Fryer on a wing to the right on third down and nine. Gill looking and throwing for the first down and has it to Ricky Simmons, number seven. And a good bit of uh, maneuvering right there by Simmons, who knew exactly how far he had to go to pick up the first down. This is another thing that Turner Gill does exceptionally well as he throws on the move, both left or right, throwing to Ricky Simmons the split end. Here's a cute little move right here as he utilizes the sideline. Elvis Patterson on the coverage for Kansas. And Gill is now two for four in the passing department for 22 yards. So it's first down, and it's Rozier in the Kansas territory, and he was one man away from breaking that one all the way. As he gets to the 38-yard line, another first down, stopped by Wayne Ziegler, number 18. Another first down for the Huskers with four minutes and 51 seconds to play in the first quarter, and Nebraska leading six to nothing. That's one of Mike Rozier's favorite plays. It's a variation of the power pitch. It's the short pitch that he takes off tackle instead of going wide. And you see some of the acceleration on that last play. First down, Nebraska from the 38-yard line. Rozier again to the short side of the field. Not a lot of room, but he's still able to pick up about three yards as he's bumped out at the 35-yard line by Patterson and Darnell Williams. Mike Rozier has already carried, as you can see, nine times, 112 yards. He has scored the only touchdown of the game. There's only one man in uh, the history of NCAA major college football who has rushed for better than 2,000 yards in a season, and that was Marcus Allen, who did it at SC. Two years ago. Tony Dorsett is the career leader, but Tony never had a 2,000-yard season. Second down, call it six from the 34-yard line. And it's Rozier again, who is stopped at the 32. Third down and four upcoming. Some of the records, uh, the possible records, most 100-yard games, most points in a season, rushing TDs. We told you about that one with Lydell Mitchell. And uh, a couple of career rushing average marks can be his by the time this season is done. He has rewritten the Nebraska record book. And uh, as we say, the probable Heisman Trophy winner. Third and four, and there he is, uh, doing nothing spectacular except picking up the first down. Since you brought up Marcus Allen, I think there's an interesting comparison here because two years ago, there were a lot of uh, people around the country who were saying, well, Marcus Allen is a good college back, but he has that great USC line that he's running behind, and we don't know how great he's going to be as a professional. Well, the Oakland Raiders, then Oakland Raiders, now Los Angeles Raiders, knew something, and they felt that he was going to be a great one. I think the same might be true for Rozier. He is running behind a great line. He's also a great back. First down from the 27-yard line, Irving Fryer in motion. Rozier's going to give to Fryer, coming back the other way. Irving gets a nice block from Simmons, moves to the outside, gets inside the 20 and bumped down to the 15-yard line. Irving Fryer, one of the most exciting players in college football today, and there, too, is another fellow who's going to go in the first round. He could be the first man picked in the draft. The most talented wing back they have had since Johnny Rogers back in the early 70s. Here's a play that's been very effective for him. It's the reverse play. Gets a good block from Ricky Simmons, number seven. Juke steps inside, outside, lift leg along the sidelines. The multifaceted Irving Fryer. From the 14-yard line, it's Rozier. And he gets to the 11. When you talk about the first guy to be picked in the NFL draft, but well, of course, a lot depends on which team it is that's going to get that pick. But... You can make a case for Rozier. You can certainly make a case for Fryer. Steve Young is another fellow they're talking about out of, out of BYU. It figures to be one of those three. Can you think of anybody else? Well, you might take another guy from Nebraska. You might take Dean Steinkuhler. Could be if, if the team that has the number one pick is really looking for an offensive lineman. Yep. Second down and seven. Here's Rozier again. The Red Sea parts for him, and it's a touchdown. Time. 
is Lindell Mitchell's NCAA record, 26 rushing touchdowns in a season, and this man still has a full game plus three quarters of this one to go. Misdirection look in the backfield, and look at the blocking here by number 58, Harry Griminger, leading the way. Rozier, you see some of the power that he has. What he is so good at is that he is both effective as an inside and outside runner. Mike Rozier, this game is uh, 12 minutes and 12 seconds old, and Nebraska will go for two. Rozier has already rushed for 135 yards. So they'll go for two and turn to Gill. Thought about running it in, but then he sees Fryer and completes it to Irving for the two points. So Gill had mishandled the snap, thus they had only six. They decided to go for two to make it 14, and that's what happens. 2.48 to go in the quarter. Huskers by two touchdowns. There it is, the lineup next Saturday on Wide World of Sports at 5 o'clock. 4 o'clock Central Time. Weightlifting and figure skating. 14 to nothing in favor of the Huskers. As Scott Livingston kicks off. Floating kick into the breeze. Fielded at the 12 by Mims. And out he comes to about the 25-yard line where Mike McCashlin, number two, makes the tackle. Mike Rozier, what a start he has. And in the last three quarters, he has totaled 299 yards. And as you said a moment ago, he now has 26 touchdowns in his career, which ties Lydell Mitchell for an NCAA record. That was amazing. He's, uh, he picked up 164 in the second half against Iowa State last week, and that turned out to be a route, so he spent a good deal of time on the bench. And is picking up 100 yards a quarter these days. Nice pass by Sire over the middle and a good game to the 48 by Darren Green. Just a little look in. And out to the 48-yard line. First down, Kansas, and let's get another word from Jim Lampley. All right, I like it. The wit with his poetry. Thank you, Jim. First down, Kansas from the 47. Humble, humble. And falling upon at the 43-yard line by Robert Mims. Second down. Remember, there was a sleep this morning, so it's slick out there. The snap from center never came up properly, and as a result of that, the quarterback didn't get it, Sire didn't get it. Robert Mims, the tailback, number 27, covers the loose football. Under two minutes now to play in the first period. Nebraska leading by a score of 14 to nothing. It is second down and the 14 from the 43-yard line. And Sire throws a little bullet out here to the 50-yard line, caught by Bob Johnson, his second catch of the day. And he takes the ball into Nebraska territory. They'll put it down at about the 49-yard line. You've probably noticed, Al, that the Jayhawks are very, very multiple in their offense. And there's a reason for that. Uh, Mike Godfrey, their coach, has been very influenced by the Dallas Cowboys. So you see them jumping around a lot, a lot of different looks. And from time to time, maybe five to ten times a game, they'll line up in the shotgun. Mike coming uh, to Kansas from the University of Cincinnati before that Murray State. Third and six from the 49-yard line. And Steyer completes it at the first down to Green, and he's out of bounds at the 31-yard line. So all of a sudden, out of nowhere, the Kansas Jayhawks take over. Green's made a couple of catches. Johnson's made one, and uh, they're in business at the Nebraska 31. Did you see that compact release right then and that bullet pass? Now, Frank Sire says that the man he admired was John Hadle, another former Kansas quarterback who played for the San Diego Chargers, and Hadle was instrumental in recruiting Sire from Edison High School in Huntington Beach, California. Sire, four out of six for 61 yards. First down for the Hawks, the Jayhawks from the 31-yard line. And this is Kerwin Bell carrying for the first time. Gains a couple, and it's second down and eight. Kerwin Bell is quite a story, number four. And, uh, you know, he was a teammate of Sires at, uh, at Huntington Beach, Edison High in, in high school uh, in Southern California. What are we doing here? We got some twins on the sidelines, I think. He got Crocky and Marky right there, 47 and 37. <laughs> All right. Crocky and Marky Alexander out of uh, Topeka, Kansas. Kansas. 
Second down and seven from the 28 yard line as Sire goes back to pass. And it's intercepted. At the 17 by Scott Strasberger. Scott Strasberger intercepting and a man who turned down an academic scholarship to Dartmouth. There's a penalty marker down, but it's against Kansas, so the play will count. Could have gone to Dartmouth, but he wanted to stay home. The illegal use of hands on the offense. From the quarterback's viewpoint, the end zone right here, you see that Sire is setting up and trying to find Darren Green, number 22. Now, Scott Strasburger, the stand-up end, is right in front there, and he forced that ball into coverage. That's one of the things he's going to have to learn if he wants to play professional football. That's one of the don'ts. First down for Nebraska from the 17-yard line. Jeff Smith is the eye back. Irving Fryer goes in motion. And this is Smith. Taking it out to the 21-yard line, Willie Pless and Travis Hardy made the stop. Great thing about being a backup uh, tailback in Nebraska is that you see a lot of activity. We've talked about this young man right here. Willie Pless, number 60, is the middle linebacker in the wide tackle six, far and away the leading tackler on the team. What he does very well is that he reads the offense so effectively, so he instinctively is right in the right position at the right time. On second down and six, Mark Shaleen takes it out to the 23-yard line, and that should be the final play of the first quarter as the clock ticks down. Right now it says five seconds to go. So as the ad says, as the commercial goes, no surprises. In the first quarter, it's been all Nebraska. They're number one, and they lead as we go to period two by a score of 14. Mike Gottfried is in his first season at Kansas, took over for Don Fambro, and his six-year career record there includes his stints at uh, Murray State at Cincinnati and his record thus far this season, which is 3-5-1. and one. We start the second quarter. This is Al Michaels with Lee Groskup and Lincoln. Nebraska on top by a score of 14 to nothing, and on third down and two from the 25-yard line, Mike Rozier tries to pick up the first down, and he's close as Willie Pless makes the tackle. This has been perhaps the most effective blocking tandem in uh, Nebraska's history, certainly the best in college football this year. And you're talking about the right guard, Dean Steincooler, number 71, and right tackle, number 72, Scott Raritan, 270 and 280. A couple of real hosses. A couple of real studs. Yep. Yeah, but they got a lot of hosses on this team. Rozier did pick up the first down at the 28-yard line. First and 10 for Nebraska. And Rozier to the 40, and he's finally tackled at the 48-yard line. Jeff Coulter made the stop. Anytime he goes to the middle like that, he's got a chance to go all the way. He is really explosive. However, this is the key to any great running back, is the hole opening up. Look at the size of that. Of course, he breaks the tackle right there. Mark Shaleen gets a block that helps bring him. But you see the acceleration. Now, remember, this man is 5'10 and 210 pounds, but he runs the 40-yard dash in 4.5. That's Fryer in motion. First down from the 48-yard line. Lee Flicker. Lee Flicker. Gill has all kinds of time, and he's looking for Irving. Jeff Coulter was right with him. Just out of bounds. A play that we saw in uh, part of our opening, part of our pregame show, the flea flicker. Now, Tom Osborne is essentially a fundamentalist, but he is always like gadget plays. Now, here's the, the consummate flea flicker, a pitch to the tailback, a lateral back to the quarterback, good blocking, good protection, Irving running a fly pattern, but obviously he's out of bounds. The good coverage there by Jeff Coulter, number 33 for Kansas. And you can see there's no, absolutely no reason for that call to be disputed. On second down and 10, Turner Gill going, and it's complete to the 43 of Kansas. Rasheen Swanson makes the catch. They can really move in this backfield at Nebraska. There are the, uh, the speeds at which the uh, fellows have been timed. Probably what's most remarkable there is that Shaleen weighs 225 pounds, and he's as fast as the rest of them. Of course, Irving is a step or two ahead of everybody. Irving's almost world class. Yep. Third and inches, Rozier, a first down, maybe a touchdown. 
was tripped up on a touchdown saving tackle by Elvis Patterson, number 32. And the block of Shaleen was the one that sprung him. Mike Rozier. So a first down to the 22 yard line. Rozier is uh, building up some unbelievable numbers. 181 yards, and we're only a few minutes into the second quarter. The game isn't even 17 minutes old. He's going to add a couple of more yards here. He gets inside the 20 to the 18, and Rod Timmons makes the stop. Mike Rozier, he's uh, seeking his third consecutive 200-yard game, and there it is on the day already. It's, in, it's incredible. 13-18 to play in the second quarter. And you know, if this one turns into be uh, turns out to be a route, and it uh, has the makings of that right now, he'll come out of the game relatively early. Second down and six at the 18-yard line. It's Fryer in motion. A little whirly bird action by Gill. And he gets down to uh, the 11-yard line, uh, close to a first down. As we take a look at the uh, first quarter numbers. So typical of Nebraska football. Look at the dominance in total yardage, but particularly the rushing yards. 177 to 18. They were able to maintain the football for 10 minutes at one second. Total dominance, which has been indicative of their style of football all season long. Mike Rozier has been the man. First down just outside the 10-yard line. They give it to Mike. And he picks his spot and uh, fumbles out of bounds at the four-yard line. Just Coulter made the stop, so adds six more to the Rozier total. Notice how he uses his blocking. He hesitated just a moment and let Mark Benning, number 73, get out in front of him. He's been called kind of a combination of Walter Payton and Billy Sims. And I think that's pretty good. Second down. They can pick up a first down without getting the touchdown, but that may be academic. Rozier gets stopped and uh, tried to pitch it back to Jill. No, folks, it was not the flea flicker. It was simply the end of the play on the whistle. Forward progress, and uh, the whistle sounded. Ending the play, so it's third down and about two and a half for the first down and three for the touchdown with 12 minutes and 10 seconds remaining in the first half. And the Huskers on top by a score of 14 to nothing. A lot of different ways they can go. They got one-on-one -on -one coverage out to the left now, Irving Fryer in man coverage, but they're going to uh, keep it on the ground and Rozier can touchdowns and there's a new NCAA record. He had tied Lionel Mitchell and now with 27 rushing touchdowns this season his name alone is in the books. And Rozier is on his way to an all-time day. And the only question is when will Osborne take him out of the game? Because right now he's just a couple of yards shy of 200 with 11.52 to go in the first half. Unbelievable numbers for a game that is not even 19 minutes old. And the extra point attempt by Scott Livingston is no good. Well, they're not perfect. <laughs> You're gonna blow something now and again. 11.52 remaining in the first half. Are they really number one? Or are they ever? 20 to nothing, Nebraska. One of the reasons Nebraska is so effective on their going in plays is they have three different ways they can score. Fullback, tailback, quarterback. And you see Turner Gill doing something that he has done so exceptionally well. And that is read, a quick read on the option play, pitching to the trailing back, the eye back, Mike Rozier with perfect timing. And he just does a little tap dance into the end zone. Didn't even have to do a whirly bird that time. Nope, nope. Didn't have to imitate Steve Davis or anybody like him. Nebraska to kick off. Scott Livingston kicks it into the end zone, and it's a fumble there. And it will be a touchback with the ball coming out to the 20-yard line. 
11.52 remaining in the first half. Huskers on top by a score of 20 to nothing. A reminder on Monday night, there's the matchup. The uh, Los Angeles Rams under John Robinson head to Atlanta to meet the Falcons. Good matchup. 9 o'clock Eastern time on Monday night football. Ferragamo Bartkowski. Interesting. Ferragamo used to play here, of course. And the reason he left Cal was because of Bartkowski. On first down, it's tipped and intercepted at the 40-yard line. Inside the 30 comes Dave Burke. The linebacker, 44, was the man who tipped it. And there's the interceptor, Dave Burke, his third of the season. Sire suffering his second interception, looking downfield, tipped by Knox. Now watch Dave Burke come into your picture, number 33, and you see, look at this. Look how Nebraska reacts defensively now once they see the interception. You see some of the downfield blocking that has become a tradition of Nebraska football. And once again, they have ideal field position. And Rozier is in there again at the 17-yard line. They fake it to Mike. He's looking for Simmons. He is open, and Gill bounces it to him. Ricky Simmons had got completely open as you look at Dave Burke, who made that interception. Good job, Dave. Amazing thing about Nebraska, though, is that here's a team that can afford to blow obvious touchdowns, as was the case there. Gill can make that mistake, but you get the feeling that uh, in about another minute and a half, they're going to be in the end zone anyway. You feel that they can score any time from any place on the field because of all of the talent they have. Totally at will. Second down and 10 with Fryer in motion from the 17-yard line. Again, we've got the Whirlybird action and the pitch to Rozier. Big eight rushing record with that touchdown. Four touchdowns today. He had four last week. He's over 200 for the third straight week. Dust off the mantle. The Heisman's coming, Mike. 211 yards today. We're going to need a computer up here in the booth to keep track of all his personal records. This is perfect timing on the pitch. What a great effort by Turner Gill. And Rozier busts three tackles as he goes in for a 17-yard touchdown run. And the extra point is... some similar tendencies. Hey, the speed, the the hesitations, the juke step, the way they were, can traverse in the open field. Also both effective as receivers. Mike Rozier is a complete football player. He does it all. 27 to nothing and the kick goes into the end zone. Down there by Mims. Now when we've got a route like this, uh, some of you are going to eventually, if it uh, stays like this, be switched to the Georgia-Auburn game. And uh, those in the uh, region around Lawrence and Lincoln will be staying with this one all the way. But uh, contractually, we can't make that switch until after the first half is over here. So the way things are going, uh, some of you may be uh, taking a look at that one. But for the moment, stay with us because Rozier is just going crazy. 211 yards. And the game is... Uh, even a third over at this point as Mims gets out to the 26 yard line for a gain of six and Bill Weber number 87 makes the tackle. One of the problems that teams have when they play the University of Nebraska is that they just very seldom get the football. Not only uh, uh, are they a, a, a great offensive team, maybe the greatest in the history of college football, but the, they have an active defensive unit. Uh, not the greatest by any means, but a good defensive unit. And teams just don't seem to keep the football very long. Second and a long four. Sired. Straight drop. Throws over the middle, and it's dropped. 
Johnny Wright probably would have had a first down. And instead he drops it, so it's third down and uh, a little bit more than four. Al, one point I think that should be made about the Cornhusker defensive unit is that statistically they don't rank in the top 20, but I think those stats are a little misleading because many of the yards that have been rolled up against the Huskers have been rolled up against subs. Exactly. No way to tell. I mean, the numbers are an aberration in themselves because they've been pulling so many opponents out. But yep. You don't know what happens in the second half. It's Mike Knox, number 44, who batted that one down. His Mike hit before also led to Burke's interception. Mike Knox, probably the best athlete uh, on the defensive unit. He's a he's a former wrestler, good all-around athlete, and he he will hit you. He comes to play. That's cliche number one. All-time coaches. <laughs> Joe Caff has resurrected <laughs> all of the old cliches we've ever heard, hasn't he? Clint Colborne. And invented some of his own. <laughs> Colborne to punt as he stands at the 12-yard line. By floating kick. Fair catch called for by Fryer at the 43-yard line. The man we were just talking about knocks the linebacker for the Huskers number 44. Look at this. Look at that effort right there. 10-29 to go in the first half. 27 nothing Nebraska. Mike Knox. We went into that commercial looking at a replay of what he did on that last play. Good linebacker. And his uh, offensive unit goes to work again from the 43-yard line. It's first and 10. And it's Rozier who's having an all-time day out of bounds at the 47-yard line. And let's go to New York and check in with Jim Lampley again. For you Nebraska fans, your pursuer remains unbeaten. Second-ranked Texas survived against TCU 20-14. They held the Horned Frogs to only 133 yards with that great defense. Texas now has Baylor at Austin and A&M at College Station. Back to Al Michaels. All right, Jim. Mike Rozier has just picked up five more. Ball at the 48-yard line. Second down and five. Turn to Gill is rolling. There's Irving Fryer. The pass a little bit behind him. So it's third down. You know, what's interesting here, Lee, is that the day began with Rozier in 14th place in career rushing. And right now he has already moved past Joe Morris, past Amos Lawrence, past Earl Campbell, past Eric Dickerson. And right now he has passed Terry Miller, or is just about ready to pass Terry Miller and move into ninth place in career rushing. He's going to move up five spots in a day, at least five spots. He already has 216 yards in 23 carries. That's Fryer in motion on third down and five. They fake it to Rozier. That's a break for Kansas right there. And then Gill picks up the first down. Turner goes out of bounds at the 35-yard line. Lest you forget, if you don't follow Nebraska, Gill can also run very well. Ricky Simmons made a nice block on Kevin Harder. Ricky Simmons, the wide receiver downfield blocking, and that's one of the traditions, as I mentioned, at Nebraska, is the fact that the wide receivers get downfield and make their blocks. Gene Huey, the receiver coach uh, for Nebraska, a former Wyoming player, was with us yesterday. He said that's one of the things he stresses over and over again. First down Huskers from the 35-yard line. And it's Gill off a nice play fake going and incomplete in the end zone. But very, very close to being interference for no call. Scott Kimball, 88, intended receiver. Good ball handling by Gill here. It's one of the best fakes to an eye back I've seen in a long time. Now watch right there. It's the old open hand, put the ball on the hip trick. Very casual, very nonchalant as he slips back here and he's throwing to wide receiver Scott Kimball, number 88 on a deep post pattern, who is well covered by Elvis Patterson, number 32. But that ball was possibly catchable. Very possibly catchable. Second down and 10. Rozier. And they limit it to a gain of three. Rod Timmons makes the tackle. It's about as uh, much as you can hope for when Mike has the ball. You hold him to three yards. But what he did there is that he turned a three-yard loss into a three-yard gain because of his, uh, his strength and his agility. Final right there. Penn State knocking off Notre Dame. 
What a comeback this season for Joe Paterno after that miserable start. Pitt, Pitt may be going to the Fiesta Bowl. That's possible, 38-7. Syracuse, 21 to 10. What happened to Doug Flutie? Yeah, I don't know. The pitch to Jeff Smith, who replaces Rozier, and he's stopped by Kevin Hartner after he gets the first down, moving the ball down to the 21-yard line. And there's Rozier, who was shaken up on his last carry. So Mike uh, getting some attention on the far side. Jeff Smith, the backup tailback, had 367 yards coming into today's game. He's not your just average backup buyback. Rozier, by the way, had had a uh, bruised thigh, so he did not uh, go through the full complement in terms of practice time this week. From the 21-yard line, look at Shaleen break some tackles and uh, turn what would have been no gain to a pick of five or six. Florida beats Kentucky by a score of 24 to 7. Virginia Tech wins by 11. East Carolina, 40 to 6, uh, leading South Carolina over Navy. Alabama having uh, their hands full today. Kent State had broken that uh, streak last week, but they're losing again. Bowling Green leading Ohio U by 10. Second down and four with Smith in motion. It's Gill rolling. He's got some space inside the 10, and Turner uh, gets it down to the six-yard line. Turner Gill is a great athlete. He was offered a uh, contract by the Chicago White Sox when he came out of high school, grew up in uh, Fort Worth, Texas, played shortstop for Nebraska's baseball team. And uh, I know Larry Shepard, the former Pirates manager and Reds uh, pitching coach and Giants pitching coach that lives in Lincoln, follows this team. He knows all about Turner Gill and the fact this fellow could have played professional baseball. About a 300 hitter, right? Absolutely. First down, goal to go from the six-yard line. And it's Shaleen moving into the end zone for a touchdown. His body's bouncing left and right off Shaleen as he goes in. 33 nothing Nebraska. When you talk about horses, you've got to talk about Mark Shaleen, 225 pounds. But you know, at one time, he had built himself up to 250 pounds as a power lifter when he was at the University of the Nebraska Omaha, transferred back here, slimmed down. And now I think he's amazing, Al, because at 225 pounds, he's able to run the 40-yard dash in 4.5. He, too, could be a first-round pick for the pros. They're going to go to their backup kicker. Mark Hagerman to attempt the uh, extra point. And the kick is good. 8.05 remaining in the first half. 34 to nothing. Nebraska leading by a score of 34 to nothing. By the way, they'll probably make it uh, official after the game that Nebraska will be going to the Orange Bowl. Wind blows the ball off the tee as Livingston gets set to a kickoff. Mike Rozier was uh, saying on the sideline before, we understand that he's fine, he's okay, but he still needs uh, some extra time here to regroup. And Mike, of course, has had uh, a day and a half in a quarter and a half. A day and a half? A day and a half from a horse and a half. That's right. Kick is fielded at the goal line by Mims, and he steps back into the end zone and downs it there for the touchback. So Kansas will take over at the 20-yard line with eight minutes and five seconds remaining in the first half. And again, uh, a good many of you in this region, uh, when this first half is history, will uh, probably be taking in the Georgia-Auburn game, the remainder of that one. But contractually, we can't make the switch uh, until that point. First down for Kansas from the 20-yard line. Out past the 30 and a first down as Darren Green makes the catch, takes it out to the 35, pick up a 15. Hogs lead 9-3 to three in the third quarter. Suey Pig, Suey Pig. Bears leading uh, Rice by 21. And Arizona making it tough on UCLA to get to Pasadena. Utah over Utah State. Lee Grosskopf's alma mater doing uh, it without him. All right. Cal leading Washington State 6-0 second quarter. First and 10. 
from the 35-yard line. Fumble, fumble. Sire is able to pick it up and take it out to the 37-yard line. Starting to sprinkle again here. Woke up this morning and uh, the cars outside were uh, glazy. Some snow showers in the Lincoln area this morning. What's the wind chill factor right now? Uh, not that bad. Oregon leading Stanford. Paul Wigan, of course, uh, has resigned under pressure, and he'll be gone at the end of the season. Temperature, I guess, is uh, about 38 degrees. As you look at uh, Stein Cooler, Dean Stein Cooler, the offensive guard. Second down and eight. Got flags thrown. Contact was made in the line. And Mim takes the pass and gets it out to the 43-yard line. And it looked like uh, Mike Tranmer, number 64, in the middle was a little anxious. So it's offside against uh, the Cornhuskers. A cold, wet day like this can sometimes be the case. Six minutes and 57 seconds remaining in the first half. But true Cornhusker fans will tell us that this isn't really even cold yet. No. no. I don't think they consider it. Excuse me. Well, one thing about it, it's a lot warmer when your team is number one. You got and, that right. And you're blowing people away like Nebraska is. They are off next week, are the Huskers, and then they'll go to uh, Norman Thanksgiving weekend to close out the regular season prior to going uh, to the Orange Bowl, the way it looks right now. E.J. Jones gets wrapped up behind the line of scrimmage by Mike Tranmer, number 64. And we've got Mike Knox, uh, 44, isolated. Mike Knox, number 44, the weak linebacker in the 50 defense, does a good job of warding off the blocker, come right up and really puts his helmet right in the ball carrier's numbers. And uh, he has been far and away uh, the most tenacious uh, linebacker for them. Backup quarterback Nat Nate Mason is uh, throwing on the side. We will see him, if not before the uh, end of the half. Certainly uh, a good deal, I would suppose, in the second half. A lot of pressure on Sire. That's intercepted by Brett Clark. And Clark gets inside the 40 and has run out of bounds near the 30-yard line. Brett Clark, 6'2", 200-pound junior, makes his fifth interception of the season. That's the third time that Sire has been picked off today. Brett Clark is probably the best athlete in the secondary for the Huskers. 37 tackles coming into today's game. As you mentioned, his fifth intersection. Good pressure applied by inside linebacker Mike Knox, once again, forcing the interception. So a first down, and Mason is in there as the quarterback. Pitching it back. Oh. And Mike Rozier takes it to the 30-yard line. There is that man that we just talked about. Safety man, Brett Clark, number 10, 200-pounder. Here's another guy that could become an NFL player. Excellent speed, good range, good hitting ability. He's a player. I'm just sitting here, I'm wondering, uh, what do you think would happen if Nebraska played the Oilers for the Buccaneers? <laughs> a lot of people have speculated that. Yeah. Or, or some teams in the or, United States football or, league. Or even some decent NFL teams, I'm wondering. Yep. Second down and seven. Rozier was in motion, and on the wing back uh, around it is Irving Fryer, who takes it inside the 25 to the 23-yard line. Irving Fryer is a man who has carried the ball 20 times this season coming into this game. He is averaging 14.1 yards per rush, and in receiving, he's averaging 21.4 yards per catch. So when you talk about a big play man, there he is. He and Johnny Rogers have to be the definitive wingbacks uh, in the history of Nebraska football. different styles, except that Fryer really is bigger and faster than Rodgers. Rodgers, they still like in terms of his excitability factor. Third down and one. The whole second unit offensive line is in there, 
right now for Nebraska. And it is Rozier getting inside the 20, and Mike gets bumped down at the 14-yard line. Elvis Patterson making the tackle. Rozier has already broken the uh, Big 8 single-season rushing record, among others today. He has now gained, thus far today, 230 yards. He scored four touchdowns. Of course. He's in the quarterback. Mason drops the ball. And a big scramble for it. He's under a pile of white shirts. Kansas thinks they have it. At the 17, they do. Look like Mason might get there. But too many Kansas. Len Gant, number 51, cradles it for the recovery. With 4.34 to go in the first half, and Nebraska leading by a score of 34 to nothing. Problems with the snap on both sides today. Mason never had the ball completely. Now watch number 51, Len Gant, coming from his right defensive end position. He is the man who covers the ball for the Jayhawks. First down at the 17-yard line for the Jayhawks. Sire turning in and gives the ball to E.J. Jones. Makes the a linebacker. You can hear him say he'll be back. Next week, he had arthroscopic knee surgery. And uh, next week, well, he doesn't have to worry about next week, of course, because they're off next week. But what he's talking about is the Oklahoma game we'll be back for. Two weeks. Good luck to you, Mark. Second and five at the 22-yard line. Draw play. Robert Mims. And a first down out to the 31-yard line with three minutes and 52 seconds remaining in the first half. Once again, uh, for uh, a good many of you who are watching this game now, the way it uh, stands at the moment, 34 nothing, uh, you'll be uh, watching the second half of the Georgia-Auburn game after the intermission here. Others including the folks around uh, the Lincoln and Lawrence, Kansas City areas, will be uh, staying with this one all the way. First down from the 32-yard line. Sire escapes a tackle and then uh, runs for his life and runs out of bounds. Out near the 42-yard line. Might have a first down. Good stiff arm by Sire that time. Looked like he was going for the Heisman Trophy. <laughs> Interesting to see uh, where Sire gets drafted. I think I, I said this at the top of the show. He might be the surprise pick of next year's pro draft because he wasn't really rated that highly coming into the season. But he's had a great year. Rolled up some impressive numbers. And many of the pro scouts now have him among the top five or ten quarterbacks in the country. First down, Kansas from the 42-yard line. Mims. No gain or a minimal one at best. With three minutes and 18 seconds remaining in the first half. Wine World of Sports next Saturday, International Professional Figures from New York. Janet Lynn, Robin Cousins, Tyler Cranston, and that one. And the World Weightlifting Championships, which our good buddy Bob Beatty covered in Moscow recently, will be on next week. Second down at 10. Sire.
was the man who made the catch. And then with the ball fumbled into the end zone, it appeared that they would be able to recover it, but they can't. Of all things to happen to Kansas. Richard Estelle beats the safety man on a post pattern. There's the, the, the hit right there by Burke, number 33. It appears momentarily that Mims, number 27, has it, but it's Mike McLatt, Mc, McCaslin, the monster back, number two, who ultimately recovers for Nebraska, so it's a touchback. Ball comes out to the 20-yard line. No touchdown. No touchdown, no nothing. Except uh, if you're a quarterback, you still get the, the yardage yeah. on the completion, and Sire has rolled up some impressive numbers through the year. So a first down for Nebraska now from the 20-yard line. And Turner Gill is back in there. And he turns and he gives the ball to Tom Rathman, sophomore from Grand Island, Nebraska, who originally uh, came here as a uh, tight end. Report on uh, Scott Reardon, the outstanding offensive lineman, is that his shoulder is bothering him and he may be done for the day. However, from that expression, it doesn't look like he's in a tremendous amount of pain. Oh, that's McCashlin there. Right. All right. He's not in any pain okay. at all. Second down and three. And the back, back of tailback. Jeff Smith picks up the first down as he gets out to the 31 with a minute 58 to go in the half. Jeff Smith is an interesting story the backup tailback to Rozier as I mentioned he had 367 yards coming into today's game a 5.1 yard average he had scored five touchdowns which you think would be pretty good uh, for let's say half a season but uh, on any other team in the country he probably would be a starting tailback and, and rolling up a lot of yards but if you play behind Mike Rozier how much are you going to play well maybe a lot yeah, the way things have gone this season. First down from the 32, Turner Gill. Going deep, looking for Smith, and there he is. Touchdown. Jeff Smith beat Elvis Patterson. And Nebraska leads by a score of 40 to nothing. Six Eight-yard touchdown pass. If they wanted to, they could score 120 points today. No doubt about it. Now you wonder why Turner Gill is regarded as a first-round draft choice by some of the pro scouts. You see it right there. That ball was thrown about 50 yards in the air to Jeff Smith, the eye back, who beat Elvis Patterson along the right sideline. It was thrown with a nice, soft, looping trajectory, and it was perfect. It was a perfect bomb. Bagerman's extra point is good. And with a minute and 34 seconds remaining in the half, It is 41 to nothing in favor of the Cornhuskers. They scored 41 points in one quarter against Colorado earlier this year. I tell you, I'd like to find out who it is. What is it, the AP poll where a couple of guys are still voting Texas is number one? I'm not going to diminish uh, what the Longhorns have done. That's a fine football team. But I don't know how anybody in their right mind cannot uh, have this team on top. You know, they... because of that controversial play against Penn State. You remember that? Sure, right, the out-of-bounds play, yep. what they thought, what Nebraska thought was an out-of-bounds catch. Yep. So they uh, they have a score to settle. They want they want the national championship. Turner Gill. Good quarterback, good shortstop. Tom Osborne, the low-key coach at Nebraska. Intense, dedicated. That's so, uh, yeah, best way to describe him, I guess. He's not flashy. He's the antithesis of flashy, but uh, he's dedicated, and he's he's got himself a tremendous powerhouse this season. 41 to nothing in favor of the Huskers. Robert Mims will bring it out. Not very far, however. And he's decked at the 18-yard line. 
Well, we were talking about uh, Mike Rozier. Penalty flag is down. See about the call, and uh, we'll get a word in a moment. There's a clipping call against Kansas. Well, Mike Rozier closing out his home career today. There are his numbers in less than a half. An incredible day. Four touchdowns. And I spoke with Mike yesterday during practice. Mike, most people feel that you have a lock on the Heisman Trophy. How significant will it be for you to win it? Well, um, I'll be pretty happy about winning the Heisman. But um, like I was telling other, other reporters, you know, I ain't come here to win the Heisman. My main goal is, you know, finish up school and play ball here at the University of Nebraska and win a national championship. But um, you know, if it don't come around, you know, I won't be upset. You know, I'll just be happy. You know. Mike Rozier talking about his Heisman prospects. If you're a betting man, go out and put down five bucks on it. <laughs> He's got a lock on it. <laughs> five? Mims carries for no gains. Five? Is that all you're going to put down? Oh, that's, you know, uh, we're talking about a nominal sum here, right? How about... Well, inning in the first half, Nebraska... of heart something tells me Kansas will not be using its timeouts <laughs> the first half. Excellent observation. <laughs> You're exactly right. Uh, and hey, listen, you. you know, Haas, before we go away, and we may lose our regional audience here in the, in the second in the second half. I just want to wish you happy birthday. Oh, hey, listen. Happy birthday. Well uh, Thir thirty nine is it? I appreciate well it's it, it, I, I'm not saying I'm not uh, saying non committal. I, I appreciate uh, that though. Happy birthday Haas. Same birthday next year. Third down and 11 from the eight-yard line. And it's Mims who takes it out to the 10, and that will end uh, the first half. So the big, the big question is, uh, will the Jayhawks reappear for the second half? You can hardly blame them if they don't. Well, they'll be back, so will we. It's halftime, 41-0 Nebraska. Back after this message about an upcoming show on ABC and a word from your local stations. Watching the uh, second half of the Georgia-Auburn game, and the rest of you will be here. Meanwhile, at halftime, uh, let's send you to New York. And Jack Whitaker, 41-0 Nebraska leading it. Memorial Stadium in Lincoln, Nebraska. No surprises this afternoon so far for the capacity crowd. The halftime score, as you can see, is Nebraska 41, Kansas nothing. And on a cold, chilly day, the crowd is being entertained by the University of Nebraska marching band. The director is Dr. Robert Folk. Take a look at a couple of highlights uh, from the first half, and of course, this can be labeled the Mike Rozier show. This got him started. This 49-yard touchdown run on their first drive. Mike told me yesterday this was his favorite play. It's sometimes known as student body left. And look at that blocking, Al. You said earlier the Red Sea parted for this man, and along the left sideline he goes. 
By this time, it's just a foot race, and remember, he has 4-5 speed in the 40-yard dash, and he goes for his first touchdown of the day. We're going to show you his third touchdown. This broke Lindell Mitchell's record, the 27th rushing touchdown this season for Rosier right here. And that goes back to 1971 when Lydell was in the same backfield with Franco Harris at Penn State. All he does after the pitch is coast into the end zone. Rozier scoring four touchdowns in the first half. Shaleen also scored from six yards on, and Jeff Smith on a long bomb here from Turner Gill. This was impressive. Look at this ball thrown with a soft looping for Gill. The backup eye back Jeff Smith, and that was about as perfect a pass as you're going to see, Al. And you know. Uh, we've talked about the fact that Nebraska has possibly four or five first round draft picks and that Turner Gill is one of the guys who's considered that and uh, normally you wouldn't think of a guy say 5'11 6 foot uh, who is as versatile as he is as a, a typical pro back but I think the NFL scouts are rating him a lot higher than he was rated at the top of the season. You know what's really impressive too, Lee, is uh, as we look at this team, they are the top priority on every other team schedule. They point for Nebraska, and yet there is absolutely nothing that any of their opponents have really been able to do this season. Outside of that one game, Oklahoma State somehow yep. lost only 14 to 10. Missouri thought they were in the game, and they were for a while, and a couple of breaks may have yep. changed it around, but when it was said and done, uh, Missouri lost by two to three touchdowns. Anyway, they have just been destroying people. This is a great team, obviously. Well, they were a 41-point favorite in this game, and if you look at the scoreboard now, it's 41-zip. I think Mike Gottfried had a terrific line. He said, this is David versus Goliath, only this time there's no slingshot. The question also comes to mind. <laughs> I was just listening to our producer, Kurt Gowdy, who was, who was filling me in on something. I, I assume you had a decent line right there. I said it was David versus Goliath, but oh, with no slingshot. Thank you, thank you for the replay. Is this the best team you've ever seen? <laughs> I would say it certainly is the best offensive team I have ever seen in all the years that I've been covering college football. 41-0 at the half. Second half kickoff coming right up. At the half. Second half kickoff coming right up. Teams are coming back out onto the field for the start of the second half. Now, there are the halftime statistics, and uh, very little, of course, uh, in the way of a parity, you might say. 346 yards on the ground for Nebraska in one half. It may be the quintessential non-parity first half, uh, indeed. Now, look, teams historically who run the best and defend against the run are the teams who win most consistently. And if you looked at, at the numbers that are reflected there, you see exactly that is the case in the first half for the Huskers. Well, there is uh, Mike Gottfried. Now, what in the world does a coach who's a team trails 41 to nothing at the half? Well, he told me to yesterday say. that they would have to play Nebraska the entire length of the field, which euphemistically is a way of saying that they have to stop the big play. Now, obviously, they haven't been able to do that at all in the first half. Now what he's going to have to do in the second half is that he's going to have to come out and play catch up football the whole time. Look at the numbers here on Mike Rozier in the first half. That's what he's done so far. And as you can see uh, with 1888 yards now he figures to go over the 2000 mark he would need 112 and let's assume he won't play in the second half here that he's done for the day 41 nothing is the score 112 uh, should be a routine afternoon even against a team like Oklahoma and that's the game remaining on Nebraska's regular season schedule also keep in mind Nebraska playing one extra game this year they were given the exemption to play in that kickoff classic that opened up the season at East Rutherford New Jersey when they bombed to Penn State. So here we go. We start the second half to kick things off for Nebraska. Scott Livingston, number 48, booting with the wind at his back in the dusk in Lincoln. And it's fielded at the 10-yard line. And out to the 14 comes Darren Green, who gets dropped at that spot. Now, the Nebraska defensive line features Bill Weber, who is 6'1", 2'10". Doug Herman is a good one. They picked him up uh, out of South Dakota. Mike Tranmer is the nose guard. Rob Stuckey, 6'3", 250 pounder. Scott Strasburger, we talked about him earlier. He had a chance to go to Dartmouth. Todd Profit making his first ever start. And Mike Knox had a fine first half. First and 10 for the Kansas Jayhawks from the 14-yard line as we start the third quarter. Sire to throw. 
and bounces one incomplete intended for Green. The defensive backfield, Todd Fisher from Omaha. Dave Burke had an interception in the first half. So did Brett Clark, the strong safety. And the free safety is Mike McCashlin. Also known as the monster back in the 50 defense. And it's a defense that's pitching a shutout to this point with Nebraska on top 41 to nothing. Second down 10, Sire the quarterback, double slot formation. There's four receivers into the pattern. We've got two penalty flags down. Pass is batted down by Doug Herner. So third down. Looked like one of the wideouts for Kansas was unsure of the play. It was perhaps an illegal procedure. That is the call. Flanker to the right, signaling to the man to the left to move out even further as you look at the Kansas offensive backfield. The Sire, and then Jones and Mims are the running backs, and Green and Bobby Johnson caught two passes in the first half and now has 50 on the season, and the fellas up front who've had their hands full today. Third down and 10 at the 14-yard line. Nebraska on top, 41 to nothing in the opening moments of the third quarter. Sire tries to drop off a screen and is lucky it wasn't a touchdown. Strasburger got his hands up so that Nebraska lines been coming in with their hands up and had batted away numerous passes today. And the defense gets a rousing ovation. A defense that, as I said before, has been underrated all year long. Their statistics are not impressive, but remember that because of the great offensive effort of Nebraska, so many yards have been rolled up against substitutes, so the defensive stats are extremely misleading. This is a good, sound defensive unit. Not a great defensive unit, but a good defensive unit. Clint Colburn to kick. Woo! High, long kick, and Hot into leg. the breeze. Fielded by Smith at the 38-yard line. Smith picking up blocking, gets into Kansas territory. Has one man to beat and takes care of him. There's another with an angle on him. The Hunter Colburn, he gets by him for the touchdown. So we won't even see the offensive unit after a 63-yard run back for a touchdown by the reserve I-back Smith. One of the best reserve I-backs you're going to see this year, Jeff Smith, number 28, finds the wall along the right sideline. The last man who has a shot at him, number 31, the punter Clint Colburn, is juked right there, and into the end zone goes Smith. Extra point attempt is blocked. Hagerman's kick was low and was blocked and we played 36 seconds in the third quarter it is 47 to nothing Cornhuskers so the Kansas Jayhawks will receive with 1424 remaining in the third quarter Nebraska's on top by a score of 47 to nothing as Scott Livingston gets set to kick off for the Cornhuskers Mims downs it in the end zone Kansas will take over the 20. We talked about the tragedy, the uh, the death of Frank Sire's father, who was murdered in his restaurant in August. It's been a very difficult year for the young man, and he reflected upon it yesterday at practice. Well, uh, when it first happened, uh, you know, football is the far from my mind. You know, I didn't, it really was amazing how uh, something like that can put things in perspective. But uh, I, you know, I started to settle down and just think about what my dad really wanted, and. Uh, you know, it made good sense to me to keep working that much harder because I know he wanted this more than, than anything for anybody. And, uh, you know, it's just a chance for me to go out and do the things that he wanted me to do. Tremendous performance turned in by that fellow under very difficult circumstances. He, of course, was very close to his dad. And uh, his father had moved from Southern California. We talked about Frank growing up in Huntington Beach and what a great thrill it was for him this year to go back and not only to have Kansas defeat USC, but to do it in the L.A. Coliseum. His father, a one-time professional football player himself for the Denver Broncos. Second down and six at the 24-yard line. Sire rolling. 
flushed out of the pocket and uh, looking for the first down and takes a pretty good shot, but he gets it as he gets to the 31 yard line and he's tackled there by Mike Knox, number 44. Sire, who had an amazing high school career at Edison High in Huntington Beach in Southern California, played with the Bell brothers, Kerwin Bell, Dino Bell. Between, between Sire and Bell in their senior years, uh, the two of them had well over 3,000 yards. And it was a very well balanced offense because uh, Kerwin was doing the running and, and Sire was doing the passing. And uh, it was a very explosive offense. They won the CIF championship and the state championship. And there is Kerwin Bell in the backfield. And that is he with the ball who takes it out to the 40 yard line, a pickup of about nine. Early in the third quarter at Lincoln. By the way, uh, those of you obviously in this area know there are no permanent lights here, but our uh, good friends from the Musco Lighting Company have come up from uh, or over from Iowa. Uh, with their portable lamps, and that's uh, that's why it looks like we're in uh, the middle of daytime. Sort of. <laughs> yeah, they really do a great job. Lighting up stadiums without the lights, and we're able to present uh, the late afternoon games for you that otherwise, uh, a few years ago, would have been impossible. Kerwin Bell takes it out to the 43-yard line. Well, you just saw the numbers on him during his freshman season, and it looked like he was going to be another Tony Dorsett. Now, in his sophomore year, knee injury, surgery, injured again in his junior season, he's shown flashes of the old brilliance at times this year, but he never really lived up to those early expectations. And, of course, they say that in life, your demands and your expectations are sometimes the source of all of your misery. Well, who said that? I forget. First down from the 42-yard line. <laughs> Maybe too much time. You've got three flags. It's like the memory book that I forgot to read. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> got offside uh, or encroachment against Nebraska. I think a good example of that would be the Dan Marino story. Remember the expectations that were pinned on him last season sure. in his senior year at Pittsburgh? Then he comes into the NFL this year after a bad senior year with very low expectations, and look what's happened to him. That's right. It's been a great story. Talk of the town in Miami. Yep. That's, that's true, because last year people expected Marino to contend for the Heisman and then probably win it, and he didn't. He said it was a bad year, but it's all in a relative sense. And, uh, Miami uh, was able to pick him. They, uh, fortunately for them, uh, he didn't have the type of year in which he'd be gone by the time they got to that draft pick. Pass is a little high, and we've got uh, a couple of penalty markers down for an interference call coming up. Richard Estelle, the uh, intended receiver, and Dave Burke gave him a pop, and they'll call interference on Burke at the about the 45-yard line. Pass interference on the defense. First down. Little luck here. Interference call on number 33, uh, Dave Burke. Actually, no, it's on Mike McCashlin, the monster back right there. You see the premature contact. And it means a first down for the Jayhawks at the 45-yard line. Sire off the fake. Protection's good. He's got a man wide open, and it's incomplete. Intended for Sylvester Bird. The tight end had let up. He was so wide open, he started to let up a little bit, and that cost him. He was uh, signaling back to Sire that he was open, and by that time, Frank had already found him, and he couldn't get there in time. That's exactly what happened. He slows up right here. If Had he kept going full speed, I think this would have been a catchable ball. Also, I think Frank Sire, in looking at that when he sees it on film, will say, hey, I should have taken a little something off that pass. Sire is now 6 out of 17 for 133 yards. It's second down and 10 at the Nebraska 45-yard line. Four-man rush. Protection is good. Little screen. Nims first down inside the 30. Tight ropes the sideline, but he's out of bounds at the 23-yard line. He stepped out at the 23. Great tightrope action along the sideline, but his foot had stepped out back here a ways. That last 10 yards was amazing. 
All right, this is a slow developing screen play to the eye back. Robert Mims, number 27. It's well set up. Now watch what he does right here along the sideline. I think this is a good example of the type of balance. You saw his right foot hit the chalk mark back there. But look at the last 10 yards before he ultimately goes out of bounds. He was really hugging that, that line. First down for Kansas at the Husker 24-yard line. And they try a draw play with Kerwin Bell, who gets inside the 20 to the 18-yard line. Bell injured in 81-82. He also had uh, some problems academically. And he was uh, out for a few games last year because of a suspension. Kansas has been under a lot of pressure. Uh, they've been uh, the subject of a, well, I guess you would call it a, a basically ongoing investigation by the NCAA. That can problems. be very upset. It can be. And uh, it's not an easy task for Mike Godfrey to come in and try to get things turned around. But uh, he's on his way. He used to be a good young coach. Second down and five. And Sire under a lot of pressure, and he gets sacked. Three-way sack at the 25-yard line. Ken Sheed, among others, number 99, who is the third team nose guard right there. They are that deep. Nebraska suits up close to 100 players, and almost everybody gets in. Auburn continues to lead Georgia 13 to nothing that game in the third quarter. SMU is rolling along, as is BYU. Third and 11. And they'll operate this time from the shotgun at the 24-yard line. Sire throwing and nearly intercepted. Pass was too high. Estelle was the intended receiver. And it will be fourth down. So we've got 10 minutes and 12 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Nebraska on top by a score of 47 to nothing. For late tuners in, this one has gone very much as expected. A route for Nebraska. A tremendous day for Mike Rozier, who in the first half alone carried the ball 26 times for 230 yards and scored four touchdowns. Meanwhile, here is Bruce Kohlmeyer to attempt a 42-yard field goal. He's one of the best in the country, but this one is no good. Wide to the right. So the Nebraska defense is still pitching a shutout. Ten minutes, seven seconds remaining. Third quarter, Nebraska 47, Kansas nothing. reason Frank Sire came to Kansas. I played against John Hadel in the Old American Football League back in 1962. Talking, talking about the uh, the lighting before cover, you saw it in the wide shot as we moved around, the temporary lights that came in as Nebraska takes over. And they've got Gill and Rozier and company back in as well as Fryer and Irving makes the catch and gets dropped at the 28-yard line. But uh, you know what was interesting on that little bumper we had coming out of the commercial was that Hadel, and everybody knows about John as a quarterback, is also a pretty good defensive back, and in fact holds the interception return record. Not only a defensive back, but he played halfback one year and quarterback the next, and he made All-American at two different positions, which I think is one of the most amazing things that I have ever heard. I've never heard of another player make All-American in successive years in different positions. Well, Mike Rozier is going to add to his total. He gets the first down. He gets out to the 36-yard line you know it's a, it's a situation where a, a coach like Tom Osborne has to feel well you know here's a Rosier he's on his way to a Heisman you're not going to run it up some people might say well why is he in there now and then again I mean he, he's only played a third of the game he missed most of the second quarter you at least got to put him in for a couple of series no matter what this absolutely and, uh, but some people uh, interpret it as, uh, as running up the score. It's really not in a way, though. Or just going for his personal stats, yeah. which is wrong. First down from the 37-yard line. And it's Rozier getting past the 40 out to the 45-yard line. He's, tough. He's running as hard right now as he was when the score was nothing, nothing. Willie Pless, the inside linebacker, number 60, and the wide tackle six, overruns the play. Watch the little juke step by Rozier right there that fakes him out. 
you see the quickness and the acceleration, and you see why they compare him to both Billy Sims and Walter Payton, particularly Billy Sims I see a lot of. On second down and one, it's Turner Gill keeping. Nice auction move, and out of bounds after he picks up the first down. Slithering is Gill. You see why he is considered the best all-purpose quarterback in the Big 8 and why he's going to make all Big 8, possibly an All-American. And you know, Al, we talked about this earlier. If he threw the ball more, he would now lead the nation in passing efficiency. He actually does lead the nation in passing efficiency with 166.5 as opposed to 166.2 for Steve Young of Brigham Young. However, he has not thrown enough times. You have to throw at least 15 times per game to qualify for the passing efficiency leadership. Now, he would need to throw 39 times totally in the last two games to qualify. I don't think he'll do it. It's highly doubtful. It's also going to be a... Now, I'm curious to see where he's going to go in the draft. We've been talking about, uh, you saw the graphic illustrating the 11 first round picks in uh, in 10 years. Time out here is uh, the injured Kansas player. Number 55, Darnell Williams comes back. But uh, they're going to have, a, they're going to have uh, Rozier obviously go in the first round. Fryer, uh, Steinkuhler figures too. They're even talking about Raritan maybe. But it'll be interesting to see where Gill goes in the draft and where he'll play, where they'll want him to play. First and 10 from the 43-yard line. Gill back to pass, throwing and overthrown, intended for Fryer and intercepted. And back comes Wayne Ziegler to the 37-yard line. So the pass was too high, intended for Irving Fryer. And Wayne Ziegler, a freshman from Nickerson, Kansas, makes the first interception of his career for the Jayhawks. 47 to nothing. Lee Gross Cup. We're in Lincoln. The score is 47 to nothing. Guess who? Uh, multiple choice? Yep. Uh, let's see. Oklahoma, Colorado, <laughs> uh, Nebraska. First down for Kansas from the 38-yard uh, line. Frank Sire has gone all the way. He's protected well again. He's uh, going for the bomb. He's looking for Mims, and it's nearly intercepted. Robert Mims, the intended receiver, he was double teamed by Brett Clark and Dave Burke, each of whom has an interception already today. Excellent coverage this time by the Huskers. Dave Burke, number 33, and Brett Clark, the safety man coming over there, covering Mims, number 27, who was trying to run a fly or streak route along the right sideline. The ball was well thrown, but the coverage was perfect. Second and 10, 8-19 to play, third quarter. It's a fumble. I believe it's a fumble. There was no indication that uh, his arm was coming forward. And Kansas still has the football at the 33-yard line. Pressure was put on that time by Doug Herman, number 63. Sire straight drop back. He's moving forward in the pocket. He pulls the ball back down. There comes number 63, Doug Herman. And it looks momentarily as if uh, uh, Kansas is going to lose the football, but uh, they, it had already been whistled dead. Third and 15 with the ball at the 33-yard line. Sire, he's got Green wide open over the middle, hits him, and he takes it all the way to the Nebraska 40-yard line where Brett Clark made the stop. Darren Green that time had lined up well wide to the right, went in motion toward the middle, and then gets it wide open. Brett Clark, who we've talked about as the best athlete in the Nebraska secondary, shows you what he does as a safety man. He reads the coverage. Now he sees that he's got to come over and make an open field tackle. And that's really like giving a clinic in the open field. He put, went right through the numbers. Meanwhile, we have uh, an injured Jayhawk here. I think that looks like uh, Renwick Atkins, if I'm not mistaken. The tackle. It was shaken up. Monday night, the Rams take on the Falcons. The Rams on top, along with San Francisco and New Orleans, uh, 
in a tight battle in the NFC West. And Atlanta at four and six, two games back. And what's interesting, we said this earlier, Al, is how it relates to this game today is that Vince Ferragamo is the quarterback for the Los Angeles Rams. Steve Bartkowski, the quarterback for the Atlanta Falcons. Now, Bartkowski is the reason that Ferragamo left the University of California to come to the University of Nebraska. A little bit of irony as uh, Gottfried comes off, and uh, we talked about Mike at Murray State and Cincinnati and his record collectively right there. Reggie Smith, not Atkins, was the, uh, the injured man who uh, has come off and, uh, with some assistance as Tom Osborne looks on. That uh, career record will uh, be 107, 24, and two very shortly as his team leads by a score of 47 to nothing. First and 10 at the 41 yard line. Inside the 40, Robert Mims, who'd lined up in a slot to the left, gets a couple. Another look at Knox here. Mike Knox is probably the best athlete in the Nebraska defensive unit. It's an unheralded defensive unit, but he is a guy who's he's a former wrestler, good all-around athlete, very physical player, a lot of intensity, and just what you want at an inside linebacker in the 50 monster defense. Second down and eight at the 39-yard line. Sire setting up the screen. Mims has some blocking and gets to the 32-yard line. I think he's just shy of the first down as Mike Knox gets credit for the tackle. And uh, not only do we have some drizzle, I think we also have some snow flurries as I look off to, to the left here. Terrible storm here earlier in the week. First big storm of the year on the Plains. And it cleared out in midweek. And uh, we mentioned earlier, yesterday was clear and some uh, snow showers this morning. Of course, where we live in Northern California, we had the first big Pacific storm of the year. More to come. Bobby Johnson. Number 88, who is the leading receiver far and away on the team, has been playing hurt, playing with a very painful shoulder separation. They had him strapped up in the first half, and he made some catches, but obviously he will not return to that. Well, he's done for the day. He caught two passes in the first half. That's 50 on the season. Bell gets his bell run. 29, gain of two. Do I have to comment no, on that? No, you don't. Missouri is leading Oklahoma State by six in the fourth period. Iowa State rebounding after their thrashing last week in the hands of Nebraska. Wichita State shocking Southern Illinois. So, so to speak, folks. Louisiana Tech over Texas Arlington. You're in, you're in rare form today, Blues. Second down at eight. At the 29-yard line, and Sire throws over the middle and in and out of the hands of uh, Sandy McGee. And it'll be third down. Sandy McGee coming, uh, in, trying to find the open area right here. The ball's thrown a little behind him, but he took a look over and he saw a fellow named Mike Knox, number 44. And uh, I guess the, the term for that is hearing footsteps. Footsteps in the fog. I understand. Third down and eight. Sire rifles one, and that's complete inside the 15-yard line to Richard Estelle, number 82. And so the... Uh, Kansas Jayhawks are driving, trying to get on the board with five minutes and 34 seconds remaining to be played in the third quarter, and the Huskers leading 47 to nothing. Estelle, number 82, is running a curl-in route. Todd Fisher, number six, on the coverage for Nebraska. Now, that's the type of pass by Frank Sire right there that makes him a pro prospect. That 
nice classic high overhand release and able to drill the ball about 30 yards and throw the frozen rope. First down at the 14 yard line. Sire on a quick slant in and Estelle gets ripped. Incomplete. Pass intended for Estelle. And the greeting party was provided by Dave Burke as you look at Oklahoma defeating Colorado 41 to 28. Next hey. opponent, of course, for Nebraska. Whoa, how about this? AM, Jackie Sherrill, and a 13 point win over the Hawks. Joe Capp's team is trailing Washington State 13 to 6. Second down and 10. From the 14. Sire lofting one toward the corner and incomplete. Intended for Sandy McGee, number eight, and the coverage provided by Neil Harris. Oregon leading by six. USC and Washington. Washington leading 10 to nothing. And all of a sudden now, Washington, because of Arizona's victory over UCLA. Good point. Uh, good chance for them to wind up in the Rose Bowl against uh, Illinois. And Illinois, of course, clinched its Rose Bowl berth today. Congratulations to Mike White. Well, what a job great, he did. Great story. He's a nice man. He's a great coach. And uh, we're really happy for him. And a real innovator. That's yeah. what I like. Third down and 10 at the 14-yard line. Sire throwing into the end zone for a touchdown. So Kansas gets on the board. It's Richard Estelle, who's played a prominent receiving role here in the second half, makes the grab for the score. And it's 47 to 6. Estelle running the route that he ran moments ago. Now look at this. He goes down, he comes in, he turns out, and the girl's back in again. And that ball, talk about throwing a bullet pass on the numbers. That ball could not have been drilled more appropriately than what Frank Sire just did just then. That's why he's a prospect. Estelle has caught four today for 101 yards, and uh, that's his first touchdown of the season. And Kohlmeyer's extra point attempt is good. So with five minutes and two seconds remaining to be played in the third period, it is 47-7 in favor of Nebraska. Turn to Gill. At the helm. First and ten from the 19-yard line. It's Rozier with a nice-looking hole. And he's out to the 27, and that's the ultimate gang tackle right there. About seven guys hitting him. Dean Steinkuhler, one of 12 finalists for the Lombardi Trophy, Outland candidate, number 71. Watch how he keeps moving and churning and, and getting that extra effort. Remember, he was a high school fullback. And uh, there's never been a big man run quite this fast. What's amazing about him is that at 270 pounds, he has been timed in 4.6 in the 40-yard dash. Second down and a yard and a half, and it's Big Mike again. 38-yard line. Well, here's just having an incredible day. First down with four minutes and 13 seconds remaining in the third period, and that is a new Nebraska single-game record, as you can see, and that's the response from the crowd. And they have afforded Mr. Rozier numerous standing O's in the last three years, and yet another one today. Rozier, who spent most of the second quarter on the bench. First down from the 38-yard line. Rozier again. He's going to add to that record. He's into Kansas territory, and again, he was about one tackle away from breaking it all the way as he gets to the 44-yard line. Very shortly, we're going to have to be thinking in terms of an NCAA record. Right off the top of my head, I think the number is 350 yards. Now, Take a look at Rozier all the way. You see the quick start. You see the acceleration. Look at the juke step. Look at the inside-outside move. Watch the cutting ability, the strength, the agility. We've talked about the fact that he is such a complete football player. Not only the inside running and the outside running, but a good blocker, a good receiver. He can also throw the ball out. Nice move by Gill here with Smith in the game at eye back, but uh, Turner's going to go down. Back at his own 46-yard line, Turner Gill. Dropped by uh, Charles Cooper. Cooper getting a hand on him, and that was enough. 
for Christmas, one Heisman Trophy. Yeah, they're going to make the announcement uh, well before Christmas, normally in early December, is when it's announced. And uh, if he didn't have a lock on it, when people see today's numbers, probably could give it to him for Thanksgiving. Yeah, absolutely. Second down and 19 from the 47 yard line. Turner Gill, going deep and incomplete. Swanson was the intended receiver. Well, the second leading candidate, of course, is Steve Young of BYU, who's been rolling up some phenomenal numbers this season. But Steve Young doesn't play for Nebraska. He doesn't play in the Big Eight. He's not going to have the national attention. And the last time a non-running back won the Heisman Trophy is when Pat Sullivan of Auburn got it back in 19, let's see, 70, wasn't it? Uh, might have been a little bit later than that. 71. 72? 71, 72. 71, I think. Yeah. That's right. Uh, Rodgers won it in 72. Third down and long. And down goes Gill back at the 40 yard line. It's Charles Cooper again, a backup at tackle who comes in to make the sack. Closer look at Turner Gill, and you can have a look here at some of his athletic ability. He's uh, dropping straight back, and he's looking to throw a pocket pass. But right there, that's kind of a quarterback's nightmare. It's the old sandwich play. He being the baloney. Now you're full of baloney. Plus, <laughs> fielded at the 15-yard line, the fair catch made there. With two minutes and six seconds remaining in the third period. 47-7. to seven. Huskers on top. Well, a reminder, of course, and uh, you'll be reminded of this quite often, I'm sure, over the next couple of months, but uh, the Winter Olympics are uh, imminent. You're off to Sarajevo well, on in Tuesday. In fact, I'm going over to Scott and I to see if they have room service this week. <laughs> and uh, we'll be there in February, of course, for the Winter Games and ABC with exclusive coverage of the Summer Games next July from L.A. And I know you believe in miracles. Absolutely. See if we can do it again. From the 16-yard line, Sire throws a bounce pass. It's incomplete. Second down and 10. Sire has gone. It's been a frustrating day, and uh, your game plan goes out the window very early when it's 20 to nothing, and uh, you've hardly had the football, as was the case today. You go right to the back pages of your playbook, and you uh, forget about establishing a running game, and you play catch-up football. I got a great trivia question for you. What former Kansas player scored 100 points in a single game? I, I think it's amazing. I think it's, it's great. All right. Well, well, we'll chew on this one for a second. Second down and 10. We've got a draw play here. It's Kerwin Bell. Takes it out to the 22-yard line. What former Kansas player scored 100 points in a single game? He, he was a great player. It, Right, He's a former uh, Jayhawk. Yep, here comes the answer, folks. The answer is Will Chamberlain. <laughs> Absolutely. Against what team? Against the Knicks uh, in Hershey, Pennsylvania, was it? Uh, and George Hill is telling me he was 28 out of 32 from the free throw line that night. Was he, it was against the University of California. No, 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 no. It was when he was a pro. Oh, when he was a pro. Okay. Third down and five from the 21-yard line. And it's complete out here to the 30 for a first down and a nice little move made by Green. Turned it into a substantial gain out to the 39-yard line where Brett Clark rides him out of bounds. First down. Here's a great split screen look at the timing that is required by the quarterback and the wide receiver on a sideline cut. Now you see that Darren Green uh, the, is running the cut and the ball is actually in the air before he comes out of his route. That's probably the definitive uh, third and long route. First and 10. Jayhawks at the 39 yard line. They're trailing 47 to seven. And their sire incomplete. Intended for a sliding Richard Estill. Second down, a minute and seven seconds remaining to be played in the third quarter. Sire, uh, and he'll probably do it next week when Kansas plays Missouri, closing in on Lynn Dickey's Big Eight record 
He was some four, 400 yards away, and he's already thrown for 234 yards a day, 12 of 30. Career yardage. So 292 more yards, and uh, we're talking about single season Big Eight. Right, and also a career record for Frank as you look at his numbers. It's a pretty good uh, number in terms of uh, yards per completion today. He's averaging uh, close to 20 yards a reception. And his passing uh, completion rate is 40%, which is not particularly impressive. Well, uh, we have a congratulatory message if you'd like to uh, deliver this. I think this is important. Have well, a volleyball championship. Right. We saw the uh, volleyball uh, is a very big sport in these parts. Yep. Just had the the tournament, the high school tournament. Coach uh, Leah Hills Hildreth, women's volleyball team, on Friday night won the uh, state class uh, D2 championship. Yep. Nice going, girls. Proud of you. Of course, here in Lincoln, as you take a look at uh, a graphic that illustrates. Uh, the family affair. The guys on uh, the Kansas team. His fathers, their uncles. They're pretty good football players in their own right. Sire goes back to pass and throws it out of bounds. And there's even more. Eddie Simmons and an uncle, uh, John Lonkar, the head of the Steelers, Dino Bell. Bronco. That bottom line there is interesting. Mike Arbanis, yeah. uh, of course, the father there is Fred Arbanis, the yeah. former all-pro tight end for the Kansas City Chiefs, one-eyed tight end. Remember, he, he lost uh, the sight in one eye and then went on, made a great comeback. He became an all-pro after that. He used to catch those passes from Lenny Dawson. He had a, a terrific career. Third down at 10. Sire. For Estelle, it bounces incomplete. Incomplete, and so it'll be fourth down with 55 seconds remaining to be played in the third period. Now, spe speaking of volleyball, speaking of volleyball, watch this. Now, here we go. Curl route. Now, here's the pass. Here's the set, and there's the kill right there. <laughs> And now the spike is coming, right? Yeah, the, the last spike was kind of ineffective. Though. I don't know. We're, we're going to have to get a new spiker. I, th I think the pass and the set were pretty good. Well, here's Colborne to do the punting. Last time he punted, they ran it back for a touchdown. Did Smith. And this time it's Smith again, but nothing doing this time. As he gets decked at the 16-yard line. And thus it will be Nebraska's football with 45 seconds to play in the third period. 47 to 7 and again the chant goes out to we're number one and there is little doubt about that little doubt about that Eddie Lee Ivory out of Georgia Tech 1978 356 against the Air Force now there is the figure for Rozier who is not in the game at this moment that's Jeff Smith County and a uh, penalty marker goes down for a possible late hit. A, well, there's no question about it at this point. If uh, Tom Osborne wanted to keep Rozier in the game, he could probably get that record. We've got a face mask call against uh, Kansas with Craig Sundberg now running the team, the third string quarterback for Nebraska. There's Irving Fryer. Irving's got his uh, uniform top off, so Irving could be uh, wrapping it up for the day. Five yards face mask penalty on the defense. It's still first down. It was not a flagrant face mask call, so that's uh, that's why you only have a five-yard penalty instead of what you normally see a 15-yard call. First down from the 24-yard line. Smith. 35, 40, 44. That man's the reserve. You do get the feeling that Jeff Smith could be first team with a lot, a lot of schools. And he probably will be here next year as well because Rozier will graduate. Craig Sundberg's mother, Linda, visited with us in the booth, and his father, David, is a former Cornhusker himself. He is the third team quarterback and a good one. 
Sundberg leading him up to the 45 yard line on first down and 10. A little roll to his left and he throws and it is picked off at the 44 yard line. Intercepted at the 44. Good wrestling match went on as the third quarter expires. And did they rule it a reception? It's possible there was a wrestling match going on and a little conference amongst the officials as to whether or not he caught it or not. And apparently they are going to award the ball to Brian Heimer. Ty goes to the offense. Ty goes to the offense in this case. And Brian Heimer made the catch. Another look here, see if we can tell. Greg Sundberg on a roll to his left. And you see the wrestling match, the aforementioned wrestling match that Al Michaels talked about huh. between Heimer and Ziegler. Ty, Ty goes to Herman. Ziegler's already picked one off today. In the three, 47-7, Huskers. Al Michaels and Lee Groskup with you at Memorial Stadium in Lincoln, Nebraska. Mike Gottfried, his old, team. Old Moorhead State quarterback. So, right. Moorhead by the Licking River. In Kentucky. That's right. A long day for Mike, but uh, not unexpected as we start the fourth period. And moving through the middle, Smith takes it to the 15 yard line where Wayne Ziegler makes the stop. Jeff Smith, who has explosive speed. Mike Rozier appears to be uh, finished for the day. And what a day for Mike. Wrapping up his career at Memorial Stadium. Again, they look right there at Rozier, who uh, came within 71 yards, assuming he's done for the day, came within 71 yards of breaking the mark set by Eddie Lee Ivory. Again, a look at some of the records that uh, belong under his name right now. Yeah, as far as career rushing today, he eclipsed the mark that was set by Rick Burns against Missouri in 1978. Single game record. Burns had rushed for 255 yards. From the 16 yard line, Sunberg takes it down to the eight. Well, this is, uh, we were talking about it before, Lee, the fact that the numbers are so impressive, and yet then again, they are not nearly as impressive as they would be had uh, all these guys been in there all the time. I've said uh, before that the teams who rush best and defend against the rust historically are the best teams. Now look at the dominance there in rushing yards, 423 to 79. Amazing. Now Mike Rozier, of course, outrushed the entire team. He has twice as many yards as the entire team. Uh, second down and short. Tim Bergan. Going for loss. There is Irving Fryer. I tell you, he is really an exciting player. That's uh, Mr. Big Play right there. You mentioned earlier that depending on a professional team's needs, he could be the first player taken in the professional draft. Well, Irving didn't do uh, that much today, but through his career, just his presence alone uh, gives the defense nightmares, is what it amounts to. Third down and two, and Sunberg improvises and uh, picks up the first down as he takes it to the four yard line. 130 consecutive sellouts here at Memorial Stadium in Lincoln, Nebraska. That's an NCAA record. And today, 76,503. Looking on. Sunberg has the size you like in a quarterback. He's 6'1, 190. He's from here in Lincoln. He's happy to be getting the chance to play today. We talked to him yesterday, had a chance to visit with him. He said he hoped he would get to play. That penalty marker is down. Preparatory to a first and goal, an illegal procedure is the call against the Cornhuskers. Nebraska was a 41-point favorite in today's game. I don't think in all the years I've been covering football on television I've ever come in uh, and where a team was favored by so many points. Right now they're e foul. exactly 40 Illegal points better. Procedure, false start on the offense. Well in fact in most of the lines in the papers this week there was uh, a listing that went NL which means no line. You couldn't even get the, a wager down on it if you wanted to and it was simply in, I believe in USA Today where Danny Sheridan posts his odds every week that uh, 
he gave us some indication of the disparity between the uh, the two teams. 47 to 7 is the score. Team victories in the last 20 years. Of course, Bear Bryant was there for most of those. Nebraska, Devaney, and Osborne. SC, John McKay there for a long time. And on the option, it's Sunberg going in for the touchdown. Craig Sunberg scoring. Tom Osborne looking to the future with his junior quarterback, Craig Sunberg. Now, that's about as, uh, the most emotion you will ever see out of Tom Osborne. Now watch what he does here as he executes the counter, or as we like to call it, the whirly bird option. Fakes to the fullback, comes here. Now watch what he does. It's a quick read, and he sees daylight ahead, and he goes right for the end zone. Good north and south running by number 15, Craig Sunberg. So it's 53 to 7. We've got Dave Schneider, who's the third different man to attempt an extra point today, kicking this one through. It could be an NCAA record for all we know. Three different men have kicked extra points. 12.54 to go. 54-7, Huskers. ...as to what's happening there. Two minutes left in that game. Here, 12 minutes and 54 seconds remaining in the game. 54 to 7 in favor of Nebraska. That's Mims back deep for Kansas. Dave Schneider will kick off for Nebraska. He is a sophomore who just booted that last extra point. <laughs> tell you, they get down into the second, third, fourth units as far as the eye backs and the wing backs and the quarterbacks and even the place kickers. Three different men for the placements today. This one will be fielded by Mims at the three. And Mims runs it out to the 15-yard line. So first down at that spot. Missouri makes it to two wins in a row over the Oklahoma schools. They beat the Sooners last week and the Cowboys today. Washington State maintains a seven-point advantage in the Palouse country against California. Oregon beats Stanford final score 16 to 7. Washington 17 and USC nothing in the fourth period. The peril of the Palouse. Never know what's going to happen when you get up in Eastern Washington. Bell fumbles and recovers at the 24-yard line. Fifty-four-seven. If you uh, tuned in late, this one went very much as you might have anticipated. Nebraska scoring early and often, and it has been no contest. Turning point was the national anthem. Uh, probably sung by a former Husker, Anthony Steele. Yes, and he steals now with the Boston Breakers in the United States football game. Not past the 25 yard line goes Bell. And he rings up a first down. That's two. Bell has carried eight times for 38 yards. First down. At the 25-yard line. You should have a birthday every weekend. You know, you've been in rare form. I think it's that, that new gift you got on your birthday. They gave you a corn cob pipe. You, you've been in a real damping posture. <laughs> That's exactly right. It's a certain age, and, uh, you know, you have to yep. kind of lay back and assess things and uh, clarify. <laughs> Sawyer. Back, and Sawyer throwing deep and incomplete. Incomplete. Intended for Richard Estelle. Franks played the entire game. There are his numbers. Reflected there. He has a chance in this game if he can uh, reach the 292 mark to break the single season Big A record. Passing yard into the season. Let's double check that. Are those the exact numbers that he needs for a big eight record? I believe that's uh, the point to which he had to get. Second down and 10. Sire back to pass. And he sets up the screen for Kerwin Bell out past the 30. And Bell takes it to the 36 yard line. And that appears to be a first down. Now he needed 402 yards total. So if he doesn't do it this week, 
we he will probably do it next week. That could be for the career, though. Let's check it out. He, he oh. needs. Uh, we're double check. We're triple checking. Career passing coming into today, he would have needed 401 to tie. Just as I was saying, he needs 402 total yards. Well, Horace, as I told you last week, you didn't major in math, and you got to lay off these numbers. It's really important. Okay. First and 10 from the 36 yard line. Sweep to the left, Derwin Bell. And he gets out to the 40 yard line where Ricky Green makes the tackle. Give me those exact numbers again. I want to just clarify this one more time. If he gets to the 296 yard mark, he will establish a single season passing record, which is held by Lynn Dickey in 1969. Okay. And 402 gives him the career mark. Lynn Dickey also holding that. That's what I was saying. No, it wasn't. <laughs> oh, I wasn't. <laughs> but you get the idea now. All right. Second down and six. Sire faking right and throwing left and incomplete. Incomplete. Intended for Kerwin Bell. Mike Rozier, 285 yards. There's Mike. Mike listed his favorite announcers yesterday in the story here. He liked, he liked John Facenda, number one. You know, John who does the NFL hot, or used to do the, the uh, narration on those NFL He books. with the dramatic voice. That's exactly right. Vince Lombardi's Green Bay Packers came to town. Final score, Auburn wins it by a score of 13 to seven over Georgia. Third down and six from the 40 yard line. Sire throwing to Bell. And he takes it out to the 44 yard line. So he is shy of the first down. It will be fourth down at about two. With 10 minutes and 22 seconds remaining in the game. So there is an old high school battery. They both played together at Edison High School, Huntington Beach, California, and rolled up about 10 zillion yards together as they won both the CIF and state championships. Came here, and at one time they had a total of five players from Edison High School. All looking for the beach. They were misinformed. <laughs> Clint Colborne to punt for Kansas. They'll take the snap for the 30-yard line. Todd Fisher back. And all of a sudden, the improvisational kick gets blocked, and Dan Casterline takes it in for a touchdown. Dan Casterline. And I believe it was Guy Rozier, the brother of Mike, and there he is, number four. He's the man who blocked the kick. What a day for the family. Little Guy goes back and says, hey, Mike, you should have seen what I did before the period. <laughs> great story. There he is. And there's his brother. Isn't that great? Look at that. There's Mike. Who's out of the game because uh, this game has turned into a rout. And... No further appearances will be made by one Mike Rozier, but Guy Rozier has made his presence felt. Extra point by Schneider is good, and the Huskers lead it 61-7. to You see the fumble right here, improvised. Now watch number four, Guy Rozier, coming in. He blocks it, and Dan Casterline, number 24, a sophomore, picks up the loose ball, and look what's ahead. Nothing but daylight. Great day for this young sophomore. 9.35 to go in this carnage. It's 61 to 7, Nebraska. We'll be back. Fighting Illini to the Rose Bowl. Nebraska leading at 61 to 7, a swift kick. Kerwin Bell falls on it at the 21 yard line. And it will be first and 10 for Kansas at that spot with 9 minutes and 31 seconds remaining in the game. 
And Ferragamo, of course, has been controversial right along. Changed colleges, then changed professional team. Went from the Rams to Canada and back to the Rams. Having a great season this year. Aided, of course, by super rookie Eric Dickerson. First down, and they go to the backup quarterback, Mike Orth, a freshman from Liberal, Kansas, who uh, hands off, and it's taken out to the 24-yard line for a pickup of five. Liberal, Kansas? I know, as a matter of fact, Liberal is tucked into the southwest corner of the state in a uh, breakfast from 1964 at Aliens Coffee Shop in Liberal, Kansas. Is that right? Exactly. Now, is there a conservative Kansas? In the <laughs> <laughs> Second down. Second and five at the 24-yard line. Handoff and a first down as Mark Henderson, who's a freshman from Lawrence, Kansas, the home of KU, takes it out to the 35-yard line. A first down for the Jayhawks. Slashing running style. Kind of makes you think of John Riggins, who, of course, was here in the late 60s before he was drafted by the New York Jets. Ultimately wound up as the Super Bowl hero last year, running behind the Hogs of Washington. Rosier, Rosier. That's right. Bell out to the 39-yard line for a gain of three. And it'll be second down at seven. Clock running with eight minutes and 20 seconds remaining in the game. Turner Gill ending his home career. Uh, these fellas will go to Norman to play Oklahoma in two weeks and then... Uh, It'll be on to the Orange Bowl, in all likelihood, for a matchup uh, we would suppose against Miami if Miami defeats Florida State tonight. Second down at seven, and Kerwin Bell moves the ball out to the 43-yard line, and as uh, this one winds down, again, we'll uh, roll these scores for you. Texas uh, had to come from behind. Auburn held on to win that one. Illinois goes to the Rose Bowl. That's official. SMU, the team that gets uh, less respect than any in the top ten, just keeps on rolling. Lance McElhaney continuing to be a great winning quarterback, yeah. as is Steve Young at BYU. Ohio State uh, gives it to Northwestern, and Penn State in a seesaw game beats Notre Dame. Third down and three and a half. Fourth. And it's dropped. Dropped by Estelle, the man who has scored Kansas' his only touchdown. It's fourth down. Pittsburgh routes Army. Syracuse over Boston College in a big upset there. Virginia rolls over Rutgers. That's surprising in light of the fact Clemson beats Maryland by so wide a margin. 25 points. I didn't think they'd beat him at all. No, after, I didn't either, yeah. After what we saw two weeks ago where Clemson upset North Carolina. Maryland upset him. Kohlmeyer who normally punt, or uh, he's the place kicker. Clint Colburn is the punter. He stands back at the 30-yard line to accept the snap. It's time the snap is good, but his kick is a line drive, one hopper that is fielded at the 14-yard line by Tom Fisher, and he's uh, dropped back at the 12. Cornhuskers have the ball, 7.06 to go in the game, 61-7, Nebraska. Well, Nebraska has this one well in hand. First unit guys uh, have had the uh, the day off for about a half an hour right now. Saw Mike Rozier, tremendous day for him. Right now, Nebraska has it. They go back to Nate Mason at quarterback on first down from the 14-yard line, and he gets written down by number 95, Joe Masandi. <laughs> He's from Hawaii, and I mean, I, I should know these names, Cupper, but uh, it's been a while. Well, you told me you used to do uh, I, five Samoans on a fast break exactly. in basketball. But, so. you know, you, when you get out of uh, out of practice. I mean, we had some early training with Manu Maliuna. Frank Manu Maliuna, the former San Jose State Absolutely. linebacker. Tui Asasopo. Right. Let's, come on, let's go. Uh, let's go. I'll Mike. work on Shape it. up. I'll work. <laughs> second down. Second and 13 from the 11-yard line. Mason, he's got some room. 
Takes it out to the 22 yard line. And it will be third down and around two. Mason is 205 pounds, number eight, who you see there, the backup quarterback, one of two backup quarterbacks that we have seen today, Sunberg being the other. And in talking to some of the Cornhusker officials yesterday, they told us that Mason was indeed a good athlete. He said particularly he has been effective in practice sessions uh, and in, in some of the scrimmages and running the option play. Not the passer, obviously, of a turn to Turner Gillen. Third down and two. From the 22-yard line, a little pitch back and a first down, maybe all the way. And out in front and on his way is Cole Miles on his first carry of the day. Now there's your third string tailback. I think it's all the same guy. They just keep changing uniforms. I can't believe they're that deep. 78 yards for the third team eye back, Cole Miles. Paul Miles on the same play that Rozier used so effectively earlier in the game. It's a variation of the power pitch, except that he cuts it up quickly. A big hole there, and all it is is a foot race to the end zone after about the first 12 yards, and he ends up going 78 yards for a touchdown. Talk about depth at that eyeback position. They have had, of course, a tradition of great eyebacks through the year. That kick hit the goalpost, so... The conversion is no good. 534 remaining. It is 67 to 7 in favor of the Cornhuskers. 67 to 7 in favor of the Cornhuskers. The uh, Chevrolet MVPs are selected by uh, Lee Grosscup. Include Frank Shire of Kansas, who threw for 245 yards, and Mike Rozier, of course, wins the award for Nebraska as the kickoff uh, goes into the end zone for a touchback. So in each man's name, a $1,000 scholarship award from Chevrolet. To the general scholarship fund in the name of the player. Mike Rozier. Tremendous day for him today. Virginia over North Carolina. Boy, did Carolina fall apart. At how, the end of the year, yeah, huh? how, how they faded. Remember when they were 7-0 a couple sure. of weeks back? Sure. Florida wins. Game Cox win, 31-7. Fourth is the quarterback, draw play, Kerwin Bell. Out to the 25-yard line. Alabama winning. Iowa beats Michigan State. Iowa should wind up in a bowl game, the way things look right now. Wisconsin in a... Uh, High scoring affair takes care of Purdue 42 to 38. Again, the Tigers beat Oklahoma State by a score of 16 to 10. How in the world did Oklahoma State ever hold these guys uh, to a four point victory? It's a mystery after seeing Nebraska today. Second down and six. And it's Mark Henderson, a freshman, out to the 28. We talked about it at, uh, at halftime. The fact that uh, Nebraska has rarely been even tested this season. They had a tussle against Oklahoma State, 14 to 7. There was the game against Missouri, which was you know, it's one of those games where, as the saying goes, it was uh, closer than the score would indicate. But uh, nevertheless, the final score was 34 to 13. So they won that one by three touchdowns. On third and short. They're not going to pick up the first down. They needed to get to the 30-yard line, and Henderson never gets there. So the Cornhuskers are going to get the ball back again, and if they can move it down and score, they're going to go over 70. And that's something that has happened twice already this evening. In fact, Nebraska scored 84 points against Minnesota on the 17th of September, and then 72 points last week against Iowa State. They came into the game averaging 52.9 per game. So let's say it again. This is the most explosive offensive unit, perhaps, in the history of college football. Kohlmeyer, who is also the place kicker, does the punting here. And it's juggled, but recovered by Nebraska by Shane Swanson at the 31-yard line. A look there, just look at the, the offensive numbers. And the one thing, of course, that sticks out as you look at it 
in a complete form there is that 14 to 10 win against Oklahoma State. The only time they have been truly tested this season. Every other game has been a rout. Major blowout. Major blowout. The UCLA game was interesting. Uh, 42 to 10, as I recall. It was very close at, at halftime. Well, UCLA led at the half. Game. That's right. And then uh, they went crazy. There it is, quarter by quarter this season, coming into the game today. And you can add uh, 67 more points to that total of 529. So uh, they are just shy. In fact, uh, a touchdown away from 600 points for the season. Shaken up with Swanson. And among other things today, Nebraska has broken the NCAA uh, scoring record as a team collectively, major college scoring record. First down from the 33-yard line. And a gain of a couple right here. Most points scored in a season, 1980, Brigham Young scored 560 points. They played 12 games that year. Now, Nebraska has already scored 596 points in this, their 11th game of the season. Amazing. What's ironic about all of this is that Nebraska may end up competing with itself for the greatest team of all time because in an earlier survey, the 1971 Nebraska team was chosen as the team of the century. Little pitch on the option play and bumped out of bounds on the far side is Tim Bergen, number 32. But it's interesting. Now, Sports Illustrated did a piece on Nebraska earlier this year talking about, uh, as I recall, Doug Looney was the writer about some of the great teams in history and talked about the 71 team. And the strength coach here at Nebraska said that uh, the fellas on this team are far stronger, far faster, bigger than they were in 71. So that's an interesting point. But then again, so are the opponents. I mean, kids in general are just bigger and stronger and faster than they were a few years ago. And so what Bob Devaney said earlier is that it's hard to compare one era to another era. So it's a, it's a good thing. It's grist for the sports fans mill to sit around and uh, discuss things like that. Of course, there's no way you can come up with a conclusive answer. But uh, as we said before, it's, it's quite obvious this is at least one of the greatest college football teams ever put together. Two minutes and five seconds remaining in the game. Cornhuskers on top by a score of 67 to 7. Nebraska is going to take a, a, a timeout here with a fourth and two upcoming. And exactly two minutes to go in the game. And we want to uh, thank our fellas up here. George Hill, Kelly Hayes, great job. Ryan Carter handling the booth with two minutes to go. It's 67 to 7, Nebraska. Memorial Stadium, Lincoln, Nebraska. Where Nebraska leads 67 to 7. Scott Livingston to do the punting here. And a fair catch is called for and made at the 23 yard line by the Jayhawks by Darren Green. So 153 to go in the game. And this one uh, well in hand. And we'll return to Memorial Stadium in just a moment. Nebraska on top, 67 to 7, with 153 to go in the game. Mike Orth is the quarterback. After Frank Sire had gone uh, most of the way, and drops it off over the middle and taken out to the 30-yard line by Richard Estelle. I want to tell you that the executive producer of ABC Sports is Rune Arledge. And coverage of today's game was produced by one Curtis Gowdy, Jr., directed by Jim Jeanette. Our technical director was Les Weiss. Our associate director was John Fasoni. Unit manager, Peter Grimm. Jack Wilkie, our technical manager. And Bill Monahan was a hoss and a half in his own right, the assistant to the producer. As Mims comes off here. Sophomore running back from Kansas City, Kansas. Sort of reflecting the type of day it's been for Kansas. No, but nobody uh, really expected the, the Jayhawks to be in this one. This one has gone very much uh, according to the way most people expect it. Second down at three. 
Then they try the draw play here, and it works for a first down. Kerwin Bell takes it out to the 36-yard line with a minute and 16 seconds to go in the game. One thing that has eluded Tom Osborne, uh, despite the success that he has had, is a national championship. Now, remember that Bob Devaney had back-to-back -back national championships before he stepped down, uh, remained as the athletic director, and Tom Osborne moved up. The Huskers feel that they have been maybe unjustly deprived of a national championship over the last two years. Clemson took it away, then Penn State. So this might be the year. From the 36-yard line, fourth, going deep, and Estelle is open at the 30-yard line, and uh, this young fella is having quite a day as the receiver. Richard Estelle, a sophomore from Kansas City, Kansas. Kansas High School Player of the Year in 1981. He has scored their only touchdown of the game. Had 15 receptions on the year coming in. And five so far today. Beautiful pass along the sideline by the backup uh, quarterback. And there it is, Estelle now, five catches for 144 yards. Well, Kansas had uh, some problems getting the next playoff here, so as a consequence, they take a timeout. We mentioned uh, that Nebraska has broken the NCAA record for points in a season. Actually, that number should be 596, 596 points. As we mentioned before, breaking the mark held by Brigham Young in 1980. And that uh, that was a team lead that had Mark Wilson among us. No, Jim McMahon was, was the McMahon? quarterback. That's right. Mc Mark Wilson's senior year was 1979. Jim McMahon uh -huh. was a junior in 1980. And he, believe it or not, threw for over 4,000 yards that season. That is a record. In fact, he threw for about 4,500 yards. It's a record that I think will be around for a long time because Jim McMahon is the only quarterback in college football history to throw for over 4,000 yards. He did it in his junior year, which was 1980. So a first down for Kansas at the 21-yard line. And it's thrown over the middle, complete, and down to the five-yard line goes Sylvester Bird with 26 seconds remaining in the contest. And uh, this one going uh, over the allotted time slot. Some of your local stations uh, will be presenting your local news to follow. So stick around as this one winds down. Ball at the five yard line. Keynes is trying to move in for another touchdown. On first and goal, and uh, Orth is lobbing it toward the end zone for a touchdown. He hits Sandy McGee number eight for a TD. So it's been a long day for the Jayhawks, but at least uh, some solace at the end here. Mike Orth has really stepped in here and done the job. Sandy McGee running a fade route, which means that he goes straight up and fades to the outside. And that is kind of the consummate touch and timing route. As Orth just simply threw it with a soft looping trajectory, it is thrown to a spot, three-step drop, and it was, it was a beauty. Nice job by this young freshman. Now Cole Meyer to attempt the extra point. No good. No good. Only the second miss all season for him. And interestingly, last week, the only other miss came from 55 yards out. He had to attempt an extra point from that distance because of three successive penalties. 67 to 13 is our score with 20 seconds to go in the game. Good. He comes in at a little more acute angle than most soccer-style kickers. That time he was off, but he has been extremely accurate and has uh, set a big eight season uh, record for field goals. 21. He's going to kick off here. Squib kick. Fielded at the 25. Look at this. Almost broke it. Taken out to the 40. Four yard line. Hey, there's a Scott smile. Livingston. There's a smile from Tom Osborne. <laughs> That's just, major emotion for Tom. Yeah. I think he's just grimacing. Osborne is a low key coach. Not Rozier, though. He's not low key at all. We're out here yesterday at practice. These guys are not only uh, fine football players, Fryer and Gill and Rozier, but uh, a lot of fun to be around. Good people. We wish them luck. 
Rodgers are going to have some great pro careers. There's no question about that. And they can look back upon uh, this season as one in which uh, they might very well win a national championship. I just can't see anybody beat this team. Not win a Heisman Trophy based on one season's performance anymore. It takes a steady buildup of nationwide publicity. And Mike Rozier began to attract national attention during his junior year. That Mike Rozier was something special became apparent during last year's battle with Missouri. Rozier was suffering a painful hip pointer and wasn't even expected to play. But he hobbled off the bench and rushed for 139 yards to lead Nebraska to a 23-19 win. Rozier earned Big 8 Player of the Week honors as well as accolades in the locker room. I think Mike Rozier is the best back in the country. You know, he can play with a hip pointer and gain 140 yards. You know, a lot of backs be lucky to get five yards with the pain that he was in. And that just shows what, what a great athlete he is. It's pretty obvious, you know, what he means to our football team. I mean, you, know, you, could, you could see what he could do. The guy just makes things happen by himself. There, uh, there just can't be very many football players like that, you know, in the, in the country. Rozier began this season as the top returning Heisman vote-getter in the country. Penn State was aware of that and keyed on Rozier all night. They held him to 71 yards, but paid the price. Nebraska's multiple offense shifted gears and pushed the Nittany Lions all over the field while scoring an impressive 44-6 win. It was the only time all season Rozier was held to less than 100 yards in a game, but it didn't seem to matter to him. After all, he pointed out, this is a team game, and the team won. Rogier rushed for 191 yards against Wyoming and 196 against Minnesota. And he began crossing the goal line at a pace that would eventually break the NCAA mark for rushing touchdowns in a season. Then against UCLA, a two-yard carry, a spectacular two-yard carry, left 76,000 Nebraska fans slapping each other's backs in amazement. And it brought nationwide publicity the play had more reruns than Johnny Carson's Tonight Show, and sports writers and broadcasters around the country got to see it over and over. And in Lincoln, his teammates began referring to him as Michael Heisman. Obviously, it takes more than one great run to convince the Heisman voters, and Rogier finished the season even stronger than he started it. At Missouri, before a national television audience, Rozier rushed for 159 yards, including this breakaway touchdown. It became more and more apparent that Rozier was the favorite to win the Heisman. Then he strung together four straight 200-yard games to finish out the season. 227 here against Kansas State. 212 against Iowa State. 285 against Kansas and 205 against Oklahoma. Rozier had set another NCAA record, the most yards gained in four consecutive games, breaking the old mark held by Marcus Allen of USC. But more important than his own performance was the play of the entire Nebraska team. That is something a modest Mike Rozier never forgot all season. Nebraska finished the regular season with a 12-0 record and the number one national ranking that they started the season with. It didn't hurt Rozier's Heisman chances that the Oklahoma game was on national television, where many of the writers and broadcasters in other parts of the country got one final look, if there were any doubters by now. It was Nebraska assistant coach Frank Solich who recruited Mike Rogier out of Woodrow Wilson High School in Camden, New Jersey. But he hadn't originally gone to Camden to recruit Rogier. I was recruiting in South Jersey uh, at the time, was looking at a tight end that was playing for Pensacola High School, which is really right next to Camden. And uh, happened to, one of the films that I was watching of the tight end happened to be against uh, Mike's team, which is Woodrow Wilson High School in, in Camden. And, of course, Mike was doing some very fine things right at that time. You know, he was running up and down the field. Of course, everybody knows what he's done since then. It was fitting that Solich was on hand to meet Mike Rozier at New York's LaGuardia Airport Saturday as he arrived for the Heisman presentation. Also there to greet him were representatives of the Downtown Athletic Club in New York, the sponsors of the annual Heisman Award. 
Rozier and the two other finalists, Steve Young of Brigham Young University and Doug Flutie of Boston College, were flown to New York for the presentation as he headed for a waiting limousine ride to Manhattan for a live network interview prior to the Heisman announcement, Rozier admitted he was growing a bit weary of all the attention he's received in recent days. The finalists gathered at the Downtown Athletic Club Saturday night for a nationally televised announcement. Rozier's parents decided at the last minute to drive the 100 miles to New York to be at their son's side when the announcement was made. After an hour-long buildup, the announcement that Rogier was the 49th Heisman Award winner was a bit anti